What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the Fast Life Podcast, which is brought to you by the homies over at Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. Check them out at SimpsonMotorcycleHelmets.com, where you can check out all the different options that they have for you to make you look cool as shit riding your bike down the road and, more importantly, keep you safe. Check them out, Simpson Motorcycle Helmets, on the gram as well. And we have a great episode for you guys today with Joey and Ruben Barella out of Pueblo, Colorado. I met these guys at the Fast Life Camp out a few years ago, and they've been everywhere since. I've seen them all over the place, Sturgis, you know, campouts again, things like that. Ran into them in Colorado a couple of times, and I was eager to get them on the podcast and just kind of hear uh, what life is like out there on the eastern slope of Colorado's Rockies. And uh, yeah, before we jump into that, let's jump into these sponsors and we get right into this episode. Cowboy Harley Davidson is located in South Austin and they are ready to help you get on the new bike you have been thinking about or help you get your current bike dialed in with all the performance parts and upgrades you need. From service to sales and everything in between, check them out at Cowboy Harley austin.com and on instagram at cowboy harley austin they have new 2023 bikes rolling in daily so give them a call or head in and let them know that the fast life sent you our longest running podcast supporter lex and moto and our bluetooth headset of choice here at the fast life since 2019 is still here providing you with one of the best bluetooth headsets on the market the G16, which I personally use on my motorcycle rides to check out everything from my favorite playlists to my favorite podcast. The battery life and sound quality is amazing on these headsets. Earlier this year, Lexan dropped the Smart Tire Pump, which became an instant everyday carry for many people on motorcycle trips. Well, now they have refined and taken the pump to new levels with the Lexan Smart Tire Pump Gen 2, which now offers an internal cooling fan is 20% smaller in design and can double as a portable charger while you're away from civilization. Pair these great products with some of the best customer service in the industry and head on over to lexan-moto.com and drop the Fast Life offer code to save yourself 15% off your order. And don't forget to give these guys a follow on Instagram at lexanmoto. If you have seen any of my personal bikes, in person or on the gram over the past six years, you will definitely notice my ongoing support for Lucky Dave's. Their seats have always fit my ass perfectly and had the style profile I prefer in the two up seat game. I have ran the San Diego bars on my FXR and Dynas for years. Now I currently run the Peacemaker bar and riser series on my 2020 Road Glide. These bars are dope with many options to customize the appearance as well as get you dialed at the right height and hand position. I would go as far to say that the Lucky Dave's riser bar is one of the most comfortable bars on the market, no matter what risers you put them in. Check out all the options for your ride at luckydaves.com and give these guys a follow to stay up on product releases and inventory restocks on the gram at Lucky Dave's. Hey guys, you ready to let the dogs out? Podcast. You're headed out to Sturgis, you're on your way. Yeah, dude, I, man, so I had no intentions of riding. I, I All I wanted to do was just find a trailer to put my bike on after Born Free and then the homies trip. I was just like, I'm over it. And then about a week went by and I'm like, man, go out through Colorado, change it up a bit, see some mountains, see some homies, do some podcasts. Like, fuck it, I'm riding again. Yep. Yeah, so it's like it... <clears throat> It's like that every time you come home for it, you're like, all right, I'm done for this for a while. Just I'm just wore out, you know what I'm saying? All right. And then about a week goes by and you're back into it. You're just sucked back in, you know what I mean? Yeah. So well, that's kind of how I felt when we were uh, we were planning to do the East Coast Jam with the FXRs, and uh, my build was going pretty good. Everything was on on schedule, but uh, we got to a point where some unforeseen circumstances came up and we weren't able to make it. So. At that point, I just kind of focused on the camp out and, mm -hmm. you know, got the bikes ready and kind of got a crew of guys out and went out there and had a blast. Weather was kind of iffy like always, but it made it worth it, you know, and the guys that we took out there had a blast. They're pretty much hooked for life. So that's always a plus. And uh, when we got back, it was kind of just like getting the FXR ready for Sturgis. That was mm -hmm. the main plan. Um, <clears throat> just getting the bike 
reassembled basically at this point I had all the parts back and uh, we started working on it and about a week before the West Coast Jam the hogs started bugging us to go they're like you're getting close you don't have an excuse not to you know so yeah at that point you know my dad he uh, gave us the time off and we worked it out to where we were able to leave out on Monday we still had to do some work that morning but we were able to take off on Monday mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> we had put the bike together it was about a week before and mm -hmm. we had a little bit of time on it I'd say about 400 miles enough to where we were confident to take it out still yeah. didn't know what we were facing and so we took off on Monday we didn't get to leave here till about three o'clock and uh, made it like maybe 35 45 miles in my valve stem it went loose on me and all mm -hmm. the air out of the rear tire went out so we were on the side of the road and crazy enough a CDOT truck pulled up and he had a uh, air compressor uh -huh. so he got us back on the road and so you had to do was tighten the like the uh, the little centerpiece yeah it? the centerpiece yeah. so basically it was my fault I didn't you know double check it and I threw the valve stem in when we mounted the tires and I must have just did it hand tight you know and by the time we got down the road that thing loosened up and <laughs> I was just lucky it didn't fall into the wheel you yeah. know he pulls up next to me and he's shaking and you know I'm look over and yeah, pull over yeah so we pulled over we hadn't even been on the road for 20 minutes 20 30 minutes and once we got that going it was cool we get going about 20 miles up the road it starts pouring down rain you know so yeah. we're dealing with weather and it, it's been hot all day so at this point i'm like screw the rain gear i just rolled and we get through traffic we get to denver and we put some gas in and at that point i go to start the bike and it's dead it won't even crank and i'm yeah. like fuck dude, what do we do now you know so I realized I had some type of charging issue, and I did some tests when we left the house. The stator rotor, or, uh, the stator and the regulator was, it looked good, but uh, it obviously wasn't. Mm. So at that point, we didn't have no choice. We just took the battery out of his bike, put it in my bike, and it started right up, but I had to push start his bike to get it started off that dead battery. So we'd roll another 100 miles, 120 miles or so, and charge it up off of his bike get to a gas stop and started swapping them so we did that for about we did it five miles did it for a total of 600 miles so five Damn. stops total uh that night we got into rawlings uh wyoming, wyoming and uh hoggish cycles he re reached out and he was like you just get to salt lake we'll figure out the bike so that's when we did the uh, next couple hundred miles we swapped that battery we got to his shop and uh I mean, I'm a little embarrassed to say this, but on a new build, it was basically, it came down to a star washer that I left out and it wasn't making a good ground. Mm. So, I mean, we fixed that thing up and hopped on the road after that. It was pretty, pretty smooth sailing. You, you know? know, when you first put a bike together like that, it's, it's like when you leave on that first 50 miles, hundred miles, it's like, you're so in tune with like everything on the bike. Like, what was that? What was this? What is that? Yeah, exactly. You know? And, every uh, little noise, every little tick, you know. And you're like double, you're like, like second guessing yourself on everything that you put on there. Did I tighten that? Did I do this? Did I do that? It's like a, it's kind of nerve wracking, right? But, and then after a while, you just get more confident and more confident. And next thing you know, you're chirping it a little bit here and there. Yeah, yeah. And that's what's funny because we were rolling. I mean, <clears throat> we were taking it easy at first, doing, you know, 75, 65, 75. Traffic was bad. It was hot, so. It wasn't a big deal, but once we got that charging system fixed out the next day, we were able to mob and able to do some highway speeds and, and mm -hmm. get going. And so that was pretty cool. Um, we ended up linking up with a few guys in Utah. Um, the Murdoch boys, they're uh, FXR guys. We didn't even know who they were. We met them like a couple days before the trip. We just uh, found out they were going to be going the same way we were. So we mm -hmm. kind of hit them up and said, hey, you know, roll with us. And uh, those guys, another dude, uh, FXR Stu, uh, FXR Gang on Instagram, he, <clears throat> he rolled out with us, pretty cool dudes. So we went from there, and we went out to Twin Falls, <clears throat> and we met up with uh, Woodgrain mm -hmm. and Detox. So we uh, hung out with them guys, and from there we rolled we out to We were totally Boise. late at this point. We were supposed to get to Twin Falls by 2 p.m. It was already 8 were you yeah, going to stay the night yeah. there? Were gonna, no, no, we, we were had just going to get, gonna to get there early because we were going to we were going to meet up with uh, Detox and Brian. Brian got off of work like at five or six or something like that. We were going to head out and make it to Boise that night, kind of chill there. They were going to show us the town. Mm -hmm. Detox was going to show us the town, uh, you know, in Twin Falls. But like I said, with all the issues we had and and fixing the bike, we didn't get there till eight eight thirty. Mm -hmm. 
And so we linked up with those dudes, rolled out to Boise, and uh, we didn't get there till like midnight. And uh, Brian, he took us to a cool place to eat pizza, and then he drops it on us. He's like, yo, by the way, we're uh, we're meeting a guy tomorrow morning at 4.45. It's like almost 2 right now. I'm like, dude. So we go back, get a couple hours of sleep, and the whole reason, I guess, behind this, because I'm not used to traveling through these areas, but it was like 112 to 115 degrees through the desert. But, yeah. So we are trying to get through there just before it got hot, basically, yep. you know, and beat these crickets there was crickets out there crickets. that were nasty i've never seen that before it was wild the way they you know? come across the road yeah. it's like a yeah, wave dude, and shit. it was yeah. like a wave and then so they, we they're slippery they're yeah, slippery they're, they're stinky stink. and uh they make a mess of your bike that's for sure <laughs> so we uh we get rolling through there we get through uh i don't know some crazy little town in oregon and finally get into that topaz lodge and had lunch there and then we just decided to head out to Lodi. We went out to Mile Maker Motorcycles, Joe Kidd, mm -hmm. met up with him and he hosted us for the night, <clears throat> cooked us all dinner and let us stay at his pad. And then from there, we pretty much linked up with a few more guys that morning and rolled out, um, went to the jam. By the end of that, we were we had 22 bikes with us. And so then. it started out with me and him, met up with five guys two more guys two more guys and by the end of all that you know 20 bikes so yeah i saw the pics from it, it looked like it was a pretty stacked yeah, event yeah this year it was pretty wild I, it was my first time doing anything like this to so to be with like all fxrs or just one brand in particular and mm -hmm. it was it was pretty neat um the people though like that that's what's always been dope about the fxr guys is it First off, the way everybody's nerding out, they know everything about these bikes. So you're in the best place to have a problem for right, the most right. part. Oh, exactly. Um, but it, I don't know. It's it's just a, it's a very uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like like everybody's so helpful and resourceful. Yeah. You know, like so if you, like you say with the part situation, one of my buddies actually blew a shock out, and a guy that we were with, he's like, man, I got another partner that's meeting me at the lodge he's like i'll just call him and have him bring some shocks mm -hmm. and so it was like that they hooked him up with the shocks got him back on the road no problem um just it's like that everywhere but just being around these guys that have the experience with the breakdowns and just keeping the bikes on the road and knowing how they pack differently and keep different parts and tools and everything that was like a whole new learning experience for us so well that's you know i mean that's what kind of changed me early on especially when we first started this podcast was when I did my FXR and the way, like even Joe Kidd, the way he helped me on the side of the road, the way FXR Mike, way all these people stepped up and helped a big wheel bagger guy right. that was building an FXR, like to, that showed me the kind of community that I, I wanted to be a part of. Now, exactly. of course, I still liked baggers. I still liked Dinas. I still liked all these other bikes. So that's what was really the inspiration to try to push and create the, uh, the communities that we've all been trying to kind of do over the years is to take the FXR mentality and put it on these other bikes. I have had the pleasure of running Arlen S motorcycle products on my Rogue Glide and now Lowrider ST. From wheels to handlebars and everything in between, Ness has the parts to not only make your motorcycle look badass, but also perform better. A great place to start on your custom journey is with one of the 12 different custom air cleaners Ness provides giving you options to fit your budget and taste. There is no shortage of killer products for you to enhance your motorcycle riding experience. Head on over to ArlenNess.com to see the vast parts catalog and drop FASTLIFE10 in all caps to save yourself 10% off the entire website. And don't forget to give these guys a follow on the gram at ArlenNess Motorcycles. Now let's get back to the show. Right, right. And like for me, going back to that, it was more or less of just like the old school biker mentality, you know, like I have this newer bike and I love it. It's a beast. I could get on it and go anywhere in the country pretty confidently. I don't yeah. even really need to take tools as stupid as that sounds, you know, but you get to that point to where, you know, it's just going to roll. Yeah. And so I wanted to just try this old school biker route style. I didn't even use my phone on this trip. I didn't use GPS. I just tried to, you yeah. know, be one with the road and the bike. And it was a total experience. Um, I, I know why I know, a lot of people don't do it. A lot of people just, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it is a chore. It's a task every day trying to keep your bike going and, and keep rolling. But <clears throat> when you get where you're going, the feeling is totally different. That feeling of yeah. accomplishment. You know, accomplishment, it is a different feeling. And 
with those type of guys, they've all been through that same struggle. They've all been on the side of the road, like you said. And so when you come across another guy that is broken down and there's anything you could do to help them, it's like almost first instinct because that's the way they were with you. So yeah. like there was some dudes that needed some help. They were having charging issues and it was crazy because I just had mentioned my you know, situation and, and that ended up being their situation. And so they were able to fix their bikes out there and, nice. you know, just the community, like you say, and it was a total different experience. It was, uh, a, it was a rewarding experience, yeah. you know? Um, it's I, like everybody there earned it though. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody you know I mean? works on their own shit. And, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of people work on their own shit. I'm not saying not everybody does, but in this sense, a lot of guys work on their shit on the side of the road just to get there and get home. You know, yeah. it's a different type of work. And uh, it's a maintaining. Maintain, yeah, yeah. I'll be honest with you. I didn't even, I didn't check the oil on this bike. I don't have one tool. I don't even have a screwdriver. Right. And I'm completely confident. Yeah, yeah. This bike's going to be fine the entire time. I probably should check though because I didn't change it from the last trip to this one. Right. <laughs> shit, but these things go. And that's what's funny. I mean, on the bagger... I could get on that thing right now and, and roll on it. And I haven't done much to it since the camp out. I've yeah. neglected it with this new bike. And um, my wife, she's pretty she's pretty excited to take this bike out to Sturgis. But I know she would rather be on the road glide. It's just mm -hmm. a little more comforting. And, Same with my you know, lady. It's just one of those things where um, the road glide's more for for... I like to take it out when it's cold and I know I could rely on it when we go on the big trips to yeah. Oklahoma and it's wet, you know, it's just a little bit more reliable. But other than that, I mean, as far as, uh, as far as this trip to Sturgis goes, this will be the first time I'm on anything other than a bagger. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to pack and what I don't need to take <laughs> stuff like that, you know, but, um, yeah, that is kind of a challenge too. Cause like once you get used to packing out a bagger, that that's the challenge I'm having with this low rider is that uh you just have to be more meaningful like okay like i you know obviously i take a lot of camera equipment and shit with me everywhere right. i go and now i'm looking at like i'm not, i'm probably not going to use this lens so no it's a fucking huge thing i'm not even going to take it not right, even going to waste right. my time you know but lo and behold i get out somewhere I'm like man i really wish i had that fucking lens dude right here yeah. would be perfect you know what i'm saying no but, i hear that i'm just like my deal is i'm trying to figure out to how much clothes I need to pack because that's where I overpacked way too much clothes on this last trip. <laughs> it's like, you know, you're used to changing all the time and now when you're out on the road like that, I realize that's that's your minimal shit. You don't even need yeah. to worry about stuff like that, you know? And I always take one pair, like I like right now I have my jeans that I, th these are like my get to point A to point B jeans. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I got some clean ones that when I get to the spot where we're just gonna be kind of cruising around, yep. I'll rock those. And then when it's time to get back on the long hauls, yep. these ones come back on. These are my bug invested. Yep, I hear that. Like for the next time we go out, I think I'm gonna do the uh, whole grab a pack of white tea, throw those away thing just yeah. to save weight. Cause it's, it's the clothes that I had anyways came home trashed. So it was easier mm -hmm. to do that, you know, but yeah, for the most part, the West coast jam went smooth. Um, on the way back, uh, we decided just to do the whole 1200 miles and on one rip. shot. So judge up on the ma major highway. Did y'all take like yeah, 50? We just took 80. We were going to take 50, but it's all like mountainy and, uh, like I said, I was just not too confident with the bike at this point. Mm. If I had any issues, I knew if being on 80, we'd have all the truck stops and all that shit. Yeah, that's right. So we did that. We left at six in the morning from the Topaz and rolled all the way back. We got home with the time change. We got home at seven. So it was like 23 hours total. You lose two hours um, on that one? Or one? One. 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 Yeah, one. so... It's Nevada, right? Yeah, yeah. so we yeah. lost one. So it was about... I don't, I don't know if it was 23, 24, but we were right there, 1,200 miles. Um, we, we didn't do anything official. We didn't track it. We weren't even planning to do no type of iron or 1K. Mm -hmm. It was just something it was like... just pull up to a gas stop and, are you good? You good? Yeah. Let's roll, you know? Yeah, we got to a point to where we were like, all right, so we're... It's like 1130 at night. Where are we going to stay? You know, and I'm not trying to pay for a little crack horn motel for a couple hours. So yeah. at that point, we just said, fuck it. We just kept on. Yeah, you get through. to that point. Right. Because if if you if it's past 1 a.m., you might as well just keep stay on the road or go sleep in a truck stop or something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, if you you know, because I always play that game, too. It's like, all right, if I stop between 10 and one and I just sleep for five hours, I can get back on the road by six. 
and I'm not losing that much. But yeah, if you're gonna get there at 3 a.m., there's no point. Right. You know what I mean? I've slept in. Uh, if you go to like certain truckers truck stops, they have like the trucker lounges. Uh huh. They got couches and shit in there. You just crash yeah. on those things. Shit, we got a McDonald's and we went out and slept in the grass for a couple hours. Till <laughs> oh the yeah, because before that, before we decided to, well, we had already kind of decided that we were gonna do, we we're just gonna shoot straight home. Yeah. So um, we're getting ready to drop off Brian and Detox, and uh, my bike starts vapor locking. Oh shit! So we do fifty miles an hour for. 100 miles mm. just to get to our next gas stop and uh i mean it was brutal just we we're dead heat and um so yeah that's where we ended up stopping where does where does brian in the pull off at wilcox or, or windover oh, windover in a mecca or something like that yeah, I'm not sure. Sure. Yeah, i don't know where they pulled off and then uh, <clears throat> the murdoch bros they pulled off in ogden okay they live in ogden i think uh fxr Stu lives in ogden as well but dude yeah we were rolling through the desert Stu, he's had a good idea <clears throat> he threw a bag of ice in his fairing just poking <laughs> holes through it letting the air go through him and uh, we Brian was uh, flying. Well, he always led us around. He always, you know, we we're rolling his way. So we let him lead and he was getting water bottles and he was spraying us with the water <laughs> bottles. I mean, it was awesome, dude. It was so hot. Dude. Yeah, we we're just was, rolling was through the amazing. desert. And what was that? What was the temperatures going through that desert at the time? It was like um, 112. And uh, it was bad. Like the. I don't know what Brian. T- he called them something, but they're like mirages, right? Yeah. And it looks like the mountains are like just floating out there because oh, yeah. the on heat the on the salt and flats and then the, the water the way it reflects and it was crazy though it really was like yeah i felt like uh i thought i felt like i was gonna fucking pass out a bunch of times, <laughs> honestly <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah we got we got through finally to salt lake and that's when me and him kicked it at that mcdonald's we said fuck it we'll just let the sun go down yeah after that it was pretty smooth was sailing cold, you know did y'all just did y'all stay the north way or did y'all cut through colorado no, nah, so we went like 80 through 287, and then that dropped us through a uh, little Laramie, yeah, Laramie little part of Wyoming. Wyoming, and then we rolled in through Fort Collins and just took I-25 all the way back, nice. which I'm sure we pissed off a few motherfuckers because we were lane splitting through there trying to get home. We were just <laughs> I mean, going, we over, going you know? and coming, we shouldn't have done that, but we had to get out. It was too I thought hot. they started letting you lane split in uh, Utah. Yeah. In Utah, well, I'm not know. sure. I know they're petitioning, like, filtering here, oh, dude, but people still be, trip. Like, that needs to be, like, unanimous across the United States is filtering. If, yeah, at least filtering. It should. It should be. I think it's actually <laughs> legal here as long as you're going, like, a certain mile I think, per hour. Yeah, you got to be stopped. You have to have sat through, like, one or two <laughs> light cycles before you say, Yeah, you right, could roll I'm through a light cycle. Yeah, so yeah, that's how like I was. And then my whole thing was, dude, this bike's hot as hell. I'm just trying to get through here, yeah, you know? And yeah. People here, though, just freak out on... You You try to pull up next to them, and they're yeah. instant road rage. And it's like, man. Yeah, so traffic was all right. I mean, for the most part, we didn't really deal with any traffic after we got out of Colorado. It was mm. smooth Awesome. Uh, we went through some roads in California that were pretty sick. I wish I would have paid attention more to what they were. Yeah, there was... It's like Highway 88 80, yeah. or something like that. It's freaking amazing man that's you're that's the one that's got on if you're going towards california 88 is like just fast sweepers yeah. on the on the uh california side yeah at one point i was like when is this road gonna end like we just keep on just dive you know diving in and just taking these corners and it was cool because the murdoch bros were on with us and just they totally been keep out that it. way either so <clears throat> we're all four brothers you know just rolling on these roads we've never been on on fxrs they have fresh builds you know and it's just yeah it was kind of wild we it was even, just insane it was just, yeah it was you just, just such had an to experience be there kind of thing. Yeah. and so we'd get off our bikes and the gas station and just be pumped you know because it's just an awesome experience. Yeah. It was it was cool. It was cool rolling up to Joe's shop. Um, he's helped us out a lot with these bikes, just yeah. answering questions, you know. And I think he gave one of the brothers a tail light. Cause yeah, he got them up. going. I mean, just stuff so, like that. You just know? little and, stuff, stories. I mean, yeah, yeah, stories. You can stay stick around for the stories all day yeah, long. All day. But long. it was neat getting to actually see where some of the stuff goes down. You know, you see it all on the gram. So yeah. to show up to these guys' shops and see where they're at, it was a nice experience. And um, 
But yeah, Joe took us through some pretty sick roads. Uh, even that to made it worth get it. To his, even to get to the house. Yeah, I mean, just from his shop to the house, took us on some adventures. <laughs> he, he's uh, he still staying in Discovery Bay? Yeah, was, so we stayed in Discovery Bay. That was pretty sick. Um, like I said, he cooked us dinner that night, and then he had a bunch of dudes met, meet up with us that next morning. So we rolled out like 10 deep, and then we met up with the rest of the dudes. And yeah, it was a pretty good time for the jam. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Mischievous Penguins, Casey, yeah, the photographer. Uh, the photographer. Mm -hmm. So he was out there, and uh, he actually rounded up a couple of his guys, and he took us to take some pictures yeah. out. I uh, saw a lot of those. They were real red. Yeah, yeah. yeah the Milky Way pics. I'd never done nothing like that, so it was pretty cool. Uh, just that whole experience. He's a real, you know, down to earth dude, and he wasn't asking for much other than just bikes to take pictures of. Yeah. So he shoots a lot of uh, uh, Monglad stuff. Yeah, like when Monglad was first coming out, he was shooting all that stuff, and he had some really badass ones he did, like with the Bay Brit. I mean, the Golden Gate and stuff like that back in the yeah, day. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, dude's rad. Yeah, so shout out to him. He hooked us up with his time, and that was cool. And uh, you know, being out there. It was just pitch dark. Like I said, well, the, the coyotes were howling. Too, though. What's up? The story before that, though, uh, Jeff from WFO, mm -hmm. he's rolling next to me, and he's, like, pointing at his gas tank, and he's like, I got no gas. And I'm like, yeah. Dude, what? Like, we're, I don't even know where we're going at this point. Yeah, because uh, Casey rounds us up. It's, like, I don't know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock, and he's like, all right, we're just going to go up the road and take some pictures. Well up the road was like 30 40 miles up the road and uh like you said when jeff rolled out he was on reserve and yeah. uh so we had to siphon gas from one bike into brian's his uh, armadillo bag. armadillo bag and put gas into jeff's bike so even that like i mean we're out in the middle of nowhere and like joe was saying the coyotes were coming closer and closer you could hear them howling. Howling. they were howling they were Everybody fucking howling back, howling back at them back. yeah it was just a i'd be worried experience. about the bears dude fuck those I'll yeah fight a coyote. it was crazy man like I, so being from colorado we have the mountains and all these roads and i'm not trying to say colorado is overrated or nothing but just being here living here you get used to it you get mm -hmm. used to the same stuff and so to be out and to see like the sierra nevadas and the different types of landscapes and the different mm. styles of mountains it was wild um and like i was telling joey what was cool for me is i got to see the continental divide from the other side each yeah, yeah each, we, we you know we've never been on that side before, all right? this area and everything and all along it you know you go up to monarch yeah. and you could see all this side of the continental divide but to be total opposite and i think what caught me crazy. off guard the most is like where we're at you know we have to go up like past fourteen thousand to get snow mm. in the summertime and some of those mountains we weren't even hitting ten thousand, but because the uh, trees grow so tall and the sun never penetrates through there there was still quite a bit of snow oh, that yeah. was still on the side of the roads and so like i said you know you you think colorado you think snow you think the mountains but you wouldn't think the border of Nevada and California would have these beautiful those, uh, mountains and these beautiful rides. I mean, it was those passes like like the the Yosemite Pass, the one twenty, is almost like it's got a short window every year where it's actually open for right. like snow and shit. Uh -huh. And uh, hell, we last year when me and the guys we were gonna stay in uh, Mammoth, yeah, and we had booked a campsite that was like on the side of the mountain a little bit higher. It was like five feet of snow there. Yeah. In ju in like the end of June. Right. So we ended up just saying fuck that and getting a, a, a hotel. <laughs> Got a little hotel, yeah. But uh, but yeah, I know what you mean on that. It does kind of the the snow sticks there a lot longer. Yeah. So I mean, I I suggest to anybody that's never been out that way. I mean, Southern California is cool. You always hear about SoCal, the beach, all that. But Northern California was beautiful. I, I yeah. it was unexpected. Um, I really want to check out Oregon a little more. Maybe Washington. That's kind of next on my list. I got. I was only into a piece of Oregon, but I have Oregon, Washington, and Montana. Those are pretty much everything west of Colorado that I haven't been. I've done pretty much all the rest of the states. So those are on my list next. And then after that, I want to start heading east. See what Dude, we that Idaho off. rip that we did last year, I've seen like a bunch of people do it now. Um, Steve Chamberlain just did it. Mm -hmm. That uh, I think it's 12. It's the Lolo Pass or something like that. It goes yeah. from Missoula to kind of like Boise. It's fucking badass. It's one yeah. of the best roads I've ever ridden. And that's what's crazy is like you wouldn't think Idaho, 
you know what I mean? Or certain states would have badass yeah. rides, but even like the Snake River, I I didn't even realize that was in Twin Falls. And yeah. so when Brian took us out to there that night, it was pretty sick, you know. And, Showed us where Evil Knievel jumped, and it's crazy how far that was yeah, to really see it in person. There was actually five people that jumped off the bridge while we were there and had oh, the did, did. parachutes on stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 dude, it shit. was freaking rad. I mean, it scared me at first because from here, people say, he's jumping, you know, he's jumping off a bridge. And, yeah. And like, you know, we thought they were jump, jumpers, that. but yeah, it was so like, like you know, freaking out. And then, you know, I see what's going on, and I'm like, all right, that's freaking <laughs> rad, dude. Yeah, experience a, all around it was like, pretty rad i guess for me riding into the sunset yeah and then waking up in the morning when it was uh still dark and then riding with the sun rising you know getting to see that in different areas it was so crazy because when i got home from my trip i was uh upstairs looking out the window and i was watching the sunset and i felt like so like trapped like confined it was the first sunset I watched in a week from indoors, you know what I mean? Mm. And so being on the road and seeing it like live, I guess you could yeah. say every day, it was it was a different experience. And well, what's hard too is when you're on the road after a while, you tend to just block certain things out. Like oh. time. <laughs> I didn't yeah, pay attention yeah, to time, time at all, was, dude. Time just like <laughs> matter, but I mean, to see the cycle of everything happen. Thunder Max is and has been my go-to for my fuel-injected Harleys since 2015. The T-Max module is designed to provide your fuel-injected Harley with proprietary auto-tune technology, allowing you the ability to add future performance upgrades to your motorcycle without having to go to a dyno for tuning. These tuners are worth their weight in gold. Head on over to thunder-max.com to get yourself dialed in with the T-Max tuner and drop the fast life offer code, which will save you 10% on your purchase and give my guys a follow on the gram at ThunderMax EFI. Now let's get back to the show. We were talking about this on our last trip that uh, a shitty day of riding can be null and voided with a badass sunset. You yeah, forget about yeah. it. When you're cruising into the town that you're staying at that night, the sun's going down. You just had the miserable day riding. The sun's going down. You're like, let's fucking go now. Where's the bar? Let's yeah. get checked well, into this and, hotel. And that's where it was with us is switching batteries and all that. I mean, we had worked we had worked to the hour up to yeah. us leaving. So, I mean, we're tired from working. We're tired from just being tired. Yeah. And Not to, to mention, have, we just put my bike together. We were trying to get his bike together. We had both of our inner primaries off probably four times before we got on the road you know it was just uh like you say when you finally get to where you're going it was nice because it was relaxing i i learned how to like put a lot of my daily stresses away and try to just relax for the night get asleep because mm -hmm. i knew they were still going to be there in the morning yeah i knew like if I stressed all night over it and didn't get a get a good night's rest, it's my issues were still going to be there in the morning. So it, when I got home, it kind of changed my outlook on some things because yeah. I was able to realize like a lot of the shit you worry about isn't that big of a deal, you know. Yeah, for sure. When you're when you're out on the road and you don't know where you're going to stay or you don't know, you know, if your bike's going to start, you know, shit like oh, that. There was one time we're on the way back. It was two in the morning. I missed the exit to go to the truck stop. So I took us through the little town. I'm just tired and, you know, not thinking it's two in the morning and just try to get find this little gas station in town. Nothing's open and we can't get anything to, you know, drink even and even to take a leak. We had to go around the back of the building and. So, you know, it's just like... We're looking for a Red Bull, and, like, these little towns aren't even open, you know? <laughs> so, it's just... Pushing through. Pushing, pushing through. through yeah. But the whole experience to do it together was cool. Um, like I said, before we built these bikes to ride them out, we were on these newer bikes, the baggers, and we put around quite a few miles. We oh, rode yeah. all over together, and, and uh, you know, this was a different experience, but... I just want to tell people though, like if you're if you're nervous about doing something or you're nervous about going somewhere you haven't been or even by yourself, like you're you're really not by yourself because once oh, yeah. you get on the road, somebody you could reach out, somebody's going to help you along the way. They're, the network, I think that goes with the performance bagger scene, the 
FXR guys, is, you know, for what it's worth, I'm not a chopper guy, but I'm sure the chopper guys are the same way, you know, yeah. and it's, it's a different type of culture because you could be out riding and you could see a car broken down with a flat tire. You could see people, you know, stranded and you don't see other people pulling over like that to help them out, you know, mm -hmm. but when you're on the bike, it's, it's totally different. Even times that we were on the side of the road, taking a break, you know, there was a lot of other bikers headed the opposite way going to the 120th, you know? Yeah. And uh, there was a few guys that would stop, you know, hey, you guys cool? You need anything? And it's like, no, man, we're just taking it easy, you know? But it was nice to know that there's that, yeah. you know, network out there of people. Yeah, it's so, crazy. The 120th, man, we were doing that. We were in the same boat, like leaving that area, like coming back to Texas. Uh, just like parades of bikers going that yeah. Like, I, I had a little bit of FOMO on that because yeah. I was thinking, like, man, I got the whole week off, and I, am I going the right way? But after I seen as many people and how crowded it was, yeah. I mean, that was cool. I'm glad, I, you know, that's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. But what I got to experience with my guys and, and my brother was a lifetime experience for me. I don't think I would have been able to replicate yeah. this either. Well, so, And we could do it again. We'll do it again next year, but we already know what we're up for. Yeah. This was all unknown. Yeah. I've never been that way ever. So oh, to go on a motorcycle, I mean, we talked about this. Well, I have gone that way, but we used to pit crew for a race team, and they flew us out that way to Livermore, California. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I've gotten to experience it that way, and we went and seen the beach and stuff, and we were on the beach, and... You know, we were talking and we said, you know, one day we're going to do this on some bikes. Yeah. Because at that time, that's when we had just got our little sportsters and we were like, hell yeah, brother. Yeah, you know, for real, dude. We were just we trying to get out. We and we're just you know. trying to get out to the bar on the weekends and, yeah. uh, you know, we're meet people. We didn't know. We were brand new. <laughs> We've only been riding for like five years. Mm -hmm. um, our parents both rode when we were growing up. We were younger. So, you know. He'd jump on the back of my mom's, I'd jump on the back of my dad's, and we'd cruise like that. That's kind of what got us, you know, going. Man. But, you know, as, as time went on, you know, school, he was pursuing his thing, me with my family. We just didn't have bikes for a while. And one day out of the blue, Ruben showed up on a bike, and it was a Sportster, it was a piece. Couldn't believe he, my dad even let him buy that bike, but he did. <laughs> well, I had, and, to, uh, I, I had to buy it, man. I had to just get something. Yeah. It had to be a Harley, and it had to be something. What made you want to get it, get get on a bike again? I always knew I wanted a bike. Like so, when we were young, and my parents rode, a bunch of the guys came to our house, and they circled our cul de sac. Like there was bikes completely around. I mean, it was just the way it sounded, the way they took off. I wanted to be on mm. one of those bikes. I mean, it was just, I always knew. I mean, we grew up racing quarter midgets. So, I mean, we had that open wheel experience. We were, he was a motorhead since he was young. I mean, yeah, we were always into racing. And I think at this point I was, uh, I, like I said, I had my family, my baby was just born and he was still like single and shit. And we were talking about racing, but the amount that it costs to race and wreck the car and put it back together and compete and be competitive, we just couldn't afford that time or money wise. That's and what so, everybody's realizing about bagger racing league right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why when we when we seen all Race, that dude, we were just like we were racing. we were so excited to go watch because we knew racing you know, is expensive. Yeah. That's why it costs a lot to go fast. That's why we you know. teamed with a car. And so we couldn't afford as, to do that. As the time went on, I'm like, dude, I could drop this kind of money into a bike. And, and not, not wreck, wreck it, it. <laughs> and still, you know, you know, have some fun on it. And so he pulled up on his bike. It was whatever. We started working on it, and then I got the bug. So I bought me one. Mm -hmm. My dad ended up getting another one. My mom got another one. And so it just kind of sparked everybody kind of to ride again. But um, I just wanted more at that point. I wanted to tour a little bit, put some real miles on, and we realized the Sportsters obviously weren't the bikes for it. So... Well, how long were you on Sportsters, like, just doing the bar thing? And the um, so we did, like, the bar was, thing for, like, maybe like a year. A year. Because I got my bike in 17, my Sportster in 17, 
And then I went and picked up the 18 Street Glide, which I still have. Yeah, and so we were doing that for like a year. And we were hitting, you know. Your, well, we went to Red River. We went to Red River for, for the rally. Yeah, and it's like 168 miles. Yeah. And that's what kicked our ass. We're I like, mean, fuck these bikes. This dude pulls, he, he's like got his feet up on his, you know, and he's laying back on his electric glide. And it's an older guy, you know, it's an older bike and stuff. But he just blows by us just total relaxing because he could see us back there for probably miles just you know getting Shaking. blown away because i've got these big old ape hangers and i'm you know <laughs> like chop fender chopper i'm all cafe style racer and, style with fucking glitter. bars yeah dude so my shoulders are burning i'm looking up thinking what am i doing you know and this dude hauls ass by us and we're like we like, got back to some- town and i'm like dude we need some touring models like this is bullshit you yeah. know like so you know, I thought about this a lot. Like, what was the thing that... Because the first times I started traveling, like going, you know, out of state, thousand mile rides, was kind of before Instagram, mm-hmm. but it was like right when Instagram started, but it right. was, a, it was a, a black bike club that invited me on a trip. Yeah. And I went with them and they kind of showed me the ropes of how they did it. And I was in the club world at the time, so that's what kind of sparked me wanting to travel on motorcycles. Right, right. So with the other people that find it through like social media or you know youtube things like that like i get that as a viable place to to find the inspiration because if a lot of people's you're like rolling the dice of whether or not the 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 crowd you're around is going to be into it and they're going to show you or they're just going to be into the bar scene thing you know yeah so like this is what was kind of crazy about when we got into the newer bikes and stuff is that our our local biker community is very strong here in pueblo but it's a very strong local community a lot of people get together to fundraisers memorial rides they do stuff like that not a lot of people like to put on miles out of town you know which is understandable due to their work circumstances and whatever um so when we bought these new bikes it was just kind of crazy because there was like five or six other dudes that were buying new bikes at the same time and we just all kind of hung out you know at the super saturdays at the harley shop and uh, we all got together and and that's kind of how we started riding and putting on miles and we would do more weekend trips you know Mm -hmm. but there was still we wanted more you know and at this time we were checking out social media and this um, is where i met well i started we started following following the performance bagger page one of the performance pages, but then I was following, um, at the time, it was just Big Lance and Galen. Yeah. They, they weren't two lane life, none of that. And Little Lance was just getting kind of kicked off with thrashing. And that's when they both had, well, Galen had the street glide, Lance had the row glide. And I was watching them on Instagram and they were putting down the miles. They were going all over and they were just saying, you know, what's holding you back? Yeah. Why aren't you doing this? Well, that's uh, when Galen's you know. riding the street glide CVO up the dirt hill. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah dude. Like, oh we're seeing God. all this shit, and we're like, man, we just wanted more than still the weekend warrior. You know, yeah. go out and I mean that was cool. Nothing against that. But go have a ride and then come back and go to the bar, and it's just like, well, yeah, I wanted to like pack my bike down and experience life on the road a little more. You know, and so that's those dudes were inspiring to me and him to get the bikes of like all right just do it pull the trigger yeah you know if you're gonna use them use them and you know my old lady she loved it because like i said she could pack it down she had her saddlebag the sissy way bar, better than a sports team. and yeah dude and so she, and then it was like i said the local scene you know people would say you're crazy why you're you're on that sportster and it don't have a sissy bar what's your deal you know and she would she was like ah, we don't need that we don't need that but then once we got the big bike it was like yeah, we need this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's when we started kind of putting on the miles. And uh, at this point, we'd never really done anything. Our, our well, I guess my goal was 10,000 miles a year. Mm-hmm. So that's literally what we've done is 10,000 miles. Try to do, that. Try to do at least. At and, y'all least. Have a, and y'all have a season here, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we have probably... What's crazy, though, we is have like, we have beautiful days during the winter where it's like we get these 70-degree days where you could go out in December, January, okay. you know? Um, dude, there's plenty of times we'll roll through where you were today, like uh, 
Highway of Legends. We'll take off in March and go do that. It'll be nice here. You know, by the end of the evening, it's, you know, 30, 40 degrees. Yeah. But we get the nice enough days to where we'll roll. Um, but at this point, like when we were riding, like I said, I, we were just trying to feel everything out. We really, people from here were like, Sergis is crazy. You're really going to go. They were, you know, they were just, they made it seem so wild. So, yeah. Fuck it, yeah, we want to go. We see want what to this go to a about. party. You know, we want to see a party. We want a you party, know? you know. So we fucking roll out to Sturgis, and we're like, eh. we go with my old man, and we take my wife with me, and we check everything out, and we had a good time. I mean, it's it wasn't like we didn't, but it wasn't like crazy how we thought it was gonna be. Yeah. You know? Everybody and, made it seem like you're gonna see boobs well, and it's gonna <laughs> be this wild circus. Sturgis is like a Sturgis is like a galaxy, right? It is. And there's lots of shit in that galaxy, but where is it happening? Oh, yeah, and it's hard yeah, to find yeah. out. Yeah, so it's basically like that's why back in the day when we were staying at, at Days Inn, we were like, "Look, camp fucking here with us if yeah, you want to party fine. with us." Yeah, yeah. And then you know, so we that's how like Ian camped with us one year, and well, we, and it's just we easier. camped right up above you guys at Sturgis View. We yeah, didn't. So. We, that's before we even kind of. But we didn't even uh, know really about know you guys, you guys yeah. yet because. We didn't really know about the camp out until our. We went to seconds. Sturgis and then we went to Sturgis in nineteen, and then your camp out in twenty, I think, is the one we went to. Or no, we didn't no. go to that one because that was the COVID year. Mm-hmm. Everybody so, was tripping, so it was twenty one when we went okay. to your so, first yeah, one. So we went and so that's kind of how it happened. Just social media, like Ruben's, like, "Yo, there's this fucking." Uh, camp out and I'm like what What are you talking about and he's like I don't know this dude that we follow on that performance page which was you you know well, he's like he's was, putting on it was Craig well Craig, Craig. you and Steve were the at yeah. that point like it was very oh, very new. very new it's like when Steve had his white bike yeah, yeah. still so anyways I'm like I wanted to go during the COVID year yeah but with our business and having the kids and everything it was it was just not in the cards to go so the following it was so year, weird, that COVID stuff. Yeah, it fucked it all up. So we, the next year, we were like, we have to go to this. I saw some of the pictures, and I, I was like convinced, like, all right, this is the party, this is the crowd I want to be around. This is what we're looking for. And um, yeah, when we got out there, we didn't know any of you guys, and at the time, we weren't sure how we were gonna be. Uh, I guess you would say accepted because he had like a cholo style bike with fucking ape hangers and mm. fishtails and airbags and all that shit. And I mean, I was on my little road glide with some T bars, but it was nothing, you know. And so we were just kind of like filling it out. And then the way we got treated, it was like, it, for one, no one even asked, like, hey, what did you roll in on? Yeah. And when we did roll in and everybody saw us packed down with the crew that we did roll in, fucking, we got like this crazy ass warm welcome. Everybody's cheering us on. Yeah. You know, and so at that point, that's kind of what really started off for me when I was like, all right, this this is what I've been looking for. This is what's changed my life. This well, is what we were uncomfortable the whole time because we didn't know what we were coming into. Yeah. We didn't know who we were going to meet. We didn't know who, what you guys were like. So. Like he says, it was a life changing experience. And like I said, I'm not going to go back and beat a dead horse. How everybody but was the way our scene is locally. It's a very judgmental scene. People are, mm-hmm. you know, if you if if you're not riding a certain type of bike or you're not into a certain type of little clique, they kind of won't talk to you at the bar. They won't go out of their way to say what up. So it's not that we expected that, but we were used to being kind of in that environment. Yeah, so when yeah. we got there and everybody was real Not welcoming. So welcoming and, environment here. Yeah, and so locally you go from somewhere local that's kind of standoffish to somewhere that's you've never been to and everybody's welcoming. It was really a nice experience. It was it was rewarding. You yeah. Know? I mean, it, was worth it, it. it also helps everybody to be welcoming of you when you guys make it like you you actually came and hung out in the center. You actually came Right, and, and made yourselves known. You know what I mean. And so, like, that's what's crazy because we were on our way one day on a job, and I threw your podcast on about the camp out, and that's kind of what it talked about. You know, don't just get here to be here. Yeah. You know, and I had a couple guys that went with me from Denver that once they got there, they just like set their tent up and kind of stayed in our camp, which it kind of sucked for me because I was trying to get them out of their shell. You know, and. uh 
I don't feel like they had a good time, which yeah, that's it's, cool, you know. But well, that that's where that's where it's getting weird, right? Because I mean, and, and you know, just to touch on this for a second, like a lot of people on the outside looking in will see you come in and you come in the way you came in this year and 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 go out there and be a part of this and like make it yours, right? right. Like what we've been saying to do. And then everybody thinks it's some kind of clout chasing thing. Right. They think it's right. like right. That right. everybody's doing this because they want followers on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And they got shit to do with that. Yeah, dude, mm-hmm. like for the Instagram deal or like the social media, like, yeah, I'll throw down a reel or whatever. But it's it's funny because I'm still in half of the homies' pictures and videos because I didn't even take videos and pics. I got like yeah. four or five. He's all, bro, can you send me all the pictures you got? Yeah, dude. <laughs> and and so like, like, well, I'm, I'm trying to post fun. those on mine. Yeah, and I'm having more fun <laughs> just being there. I, I get it about the clout chasing and the Instagram, but when you're there, it's different. And like, for instance, this year I took my boy, I'm going to tell, I'm going to shoot him out. Austin. Um, this was his first, like, big ride he bought a lowrider st and fucking i think he had like what yeah, i don't know like he had like a hundred miles on his fucking bike before but he we had took like, him on this he trip had, he had like a hundred miles on somebody else's bike or something like that i don't know but he bought a bike and fucking we're like bro come to this camp out and he did so we drug him through so snow he came, sleet hail he came, rain he came with um he came with my boy atomic cycle coatings yeah, uh, yeah. adam <laughs> and fucking uh it was funny as shit because snaps. yeah dude so these guys i'm like we're in the club style games right and like they i keep on like pumping them up so they think it's like me and ruben and my other boy sam and fucking when you say make it your own that's what i did to austin i just threw that full out there i was like dog i signed you up it's your turn to, it's your time to shine bro and like I mean, he probably kicked me in the nuts if he knew that's what he had to do up there. <laughs> but uh, at the end of it, he had such a good time, and everybody was, you know, bro, we seen you up there, and you guys killed it. And, you know, it, it, it helped him, like, establish his self there to where, even though it was his first time, yeah, I had been with dudes that have gone to the camp out a, a few times that I felt like Austin had been there for years with me just because the way he, like you say, made it his own and had a good time. Like, mm-hmm. If you're just going to sit around and watch everybody, that's cool. But it really is the place to where if you're if, if you want to break out of your shell and you want to just be different and be loud and be crazy and just no one's going to judge you. You're not going to see these cats yeah. for a whole fucking year if you even no, decide to go yeah, back. I mean, but if, and what's bad? OK, so like our buddy Sam, he just, you know, he's like hit. We're already, you know, drinking and stuff. And he's like, I'm going to do it, man. And I'm like, okay. And so I, I lose him for like another half an hour. And he comes walking up in his banana hammock. And I'm like, oh, no. Like, he did it, you know? It's like well, He kept this- saying he was going to do it. And now when you go back to clout chasing and followers, this fool don't even have, like, I mean, he he's on Instagram, Instagram now just to, like, keep track with, like, the homies. But yeah. he don't post shit. He ain't about it. And he's on a wide glide and he just rolls and dude. he rips and it just, he just likes to party and he likes to go to these things. And that's yeah. what we're trying to promote to like, you don't need a bagger. You don't need an FXR. You don't dude. If you don't even need a fucking bike to show up to this, honestly, yeah, you could just you pull up and party and, and hang out. You know, like, let's roll. Our dad wants to go to the camp out next year. I keep convincing him just to bring his camper because I'm like, Dad, you ain't gonna. You don't need to ride, ride dude. dude. Just, just come bring and party, your camper and party down. Like so, Dad loves to party. As far as the <clears throat> the, you know, bagger scene and FXR scene and the cultures and scenes or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> like, I guess the reason I kind of went with the FXR deal is, you know. Uh, the, the flex game, I guess you could say, in the bagger. There's certain guys that think, like you say, about the clout. And everybody's all about likes and the newest paint and the newest fucking parts and this, that, and the other. And so I just wanted to kind of go a different route and still show that you could, like, build a different style bike and still put miles on it and still have fun. And you don't have to... And you could have a family. You could you yeah, could juggle you all this. You don't have to drain your bank to yeah to win I mean, an award at the is, show it's expensive you know? still don't get me wrong yeah I, I i miss the days when we all did this stuff to our baggers just to do it you know yeah. what i mean before mm-hmm. and this is no shade towards any of the, the shows but before there was a hardcore cycle show or a hangover show or 
whatever. Yeah. It's like people used to, we painted the baggers. Mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. Yeah. put carbon on it. We put this stuff on it. And then we rode them to these events and partied. Yep. Right? That's that's performance. That's, that's what, performance what actually was. attracted me to your camp out. Because, like I said, you don't know what to expect. But then when you pull up and you see how many dudes rode their fucking... Sixty thousand, eighty thousand, hundred thousand dollar bike through fucking rain and mud and hail and snow, and to get there just to party, have a good time, like there ain't no official show there, there ain't no trophy, there ain't no award, you yeah. know. And, and so, that's what what kind of pulled me away from the, I guess you could say mainstream. Well, no, one hundred percent right now. The bagger, the bagger thing is kind of going through a, a phase where. It is becoming more uh, like a lot of more people are spending money on these baggers, which is good because I mean I'm in that's what I do for a living. Yeah, I, yeah, I need people yeah. to paint bikes and stuff like exactly. that. But but what you're getting right now is uh, you're getting a lot of people that that are just being loud on the internet instead of just riding their bikes. Mm-hmm. Right. Like if you didn't if you don't like who won the show at, in in Daytona, why the fuck would you get on the internet and talk shit? Right. Exactly. Go ride your bike right. somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Or we like, get too many people that want to flex. Like somebody will ask a simple question. Yo, I have a problem with this or I have a problem with that. And then instead of giving you an answer, they want to just say, well, you should be running this more superior, expensive part. That's your problem. You know, yeah. they want to just put a tag on it. Like if you're not running all these certain parts, that's your issue. But see, that's a that. So I, I now I'm guilty of this a, at one point in my life and on this podcast. I kind of had that mentality like, oh, if you do this, this and this, blah, blah, blah. Or what it was, was like I wanted the validation of knowing that the parts that I use, everybody else used because that makes me know that my shit was good. Right. Right. right? Yeah. Because that's what people do a lot is that they want you to run the kind of parts they do because then they're they're like that makes them in this crowd of like the end parts right and i'm guilty of that because i mean anytime anybody talks suspension i'm an owens guy i just i that's all i say you know and so he's a legends guy that's no, all no, he fucking no, no, you know no. says so but this is the kind of setup for me is is i wanted to prove to and i still haven't been able to do it because we haven't been on the road together but craig uh-huh literally blocked me off of that performance bagger page because <laughs> this was like back in the day ba- okay. and so this when he had in, his fishtails and his fucking a pangers and my fucking stock a pangers uh-huh. and i was like dude i'll fucking blow these dudes out of the water like they don't even know he's like, like pick a fucking road bro yeah, and like, like pick a fucking road let's roll like you know and i'm like so i'm like dude i'm going to this camp out and he's like what camp out and i'm like it's fucking past life thing. Like I'm going to this camp out because this guy's gonna be there, and like I want to roll with him. Like yeah, I want to prove to this fool, like you don't need T bars, you don't need this all this crap. Like I'm gonna roll with you, and so it. We showed up, and it was completely different. Like we said earlier, I mean, it was like it was giving just hugs, so welcoming. Uh, like yeah, didn't like, give they a didn't fuck give a crap road. if I had fishtails or ape yeah. hangers or what it was. So it's like because yeah, in real life, when you're not sitting on on your phone, just taking a shit, scrolling through Instagram. Right. In real life, you're living and you're just doing it. So you don't really give a shit what people ride and. It, if they do or don't ride the kind of parts you have, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, and, like, back to the whole, like, some people get so twisted on fucking Instagram just off of comments, and it's like, bro, if you actually rolled out and went to some of these events and got to meet these characters and you knew how they actually were in real life, you know that their comment is far from fucking offensive or trying yeah. to talk shit. That's just how we kind of, yeah. you know, you got to have tough skin. And that's what I've seen in the in the new part of the bagger community of, like, the newer I don't know how to say it, but just the newer scene that's attracted to it's it. The, you can't. The newer classes. Yeah, you just in. can't. Yeah. You got to be careful what you say to them because they get fucking wild sometimes. They're not used Sensitive. to the, you know. Yeah, when I went to Craig camp out last year, I mean, there was a lot of new people from like the Florida, like especially South Florida that really were completely new to the world of the performance stuff. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it was, it was kind of weird, you know, because it's like being you know being around with it for so long it's like you've seen you just kind of like my brand's been kind of synonymous within this this scene right right? and so when you start coming around it fucked my ego is what i'm trying to get at is uh when you start coming around a lot of people that don't know who the fuck our brand is blah 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 and you know which is kudos to craig and you know putting that camp out on and getting more people to come out to it and uh, start drinking the kool-aid but you know 
definitely uh, fucked with my ego. So. They're like, what up, Chase? And you're like, no, bro. It's Jace. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> who, who are you? <laughs> no, dude. It's just one of those things where, like, all I'm about is getting people into this if you're if you're on the band of like i don't know what to do or which bike to get don't it don't fucking matter get any bike but what you need to do is put yourself out there go to these events go to these little camp outs um i know you guys have said this before but you go to these little camp outs right little camp outs well they're getting bigger but you go to these <laughs> well i guess what i'm trying to say is you go to these camp outs that aren't like um industry ran they're not rallies they're not fucking overtaken by booths and people trying to sell you shit right so when you get out there to these smaller gigs you start networking with people because you do come to realize like yo this guy has this business and this guy works here and this guy does that and you do meet a lot of people in the industry and it opens doors for you because then you do realize like yo this cat's just a regular cat like me yeah. you start talking around the campfire next thing you know he's like man if you're rolling to sturgis or you're rolling to this or you're rolling to that hit me up and that's how i've networked with people uh, i don't even run a lot of these dudes parts or products but it's just constantly seeing them at events yeah. and camp outs and that's how i've formed relationships to be able to still pretty much be cool with everybody it don't matter what brand or who's competing with who you know i mean it's like you say this is you're in it you know this is your bread and butter so at the end yeah i mean you know. I, I also want everybody to get along and realize that there's enough to go around for everybody you know what i mean Definitely. so you know that that's the reason why like you know you know all the painters that are out there it's like bro like it was good seeing your boy coming down to the camp out this year and and and, and you know what i mean like come like lean into this there's there's money in yeah. this people want shit painted right yeah and that's you the know? thing like even and that was funny because like um when we, when i was doing the fxr um adam from atomic cycle Cones, he was the one that was doing the work with me helping me paint it doing all my stuff and he's like bro i need to get you going for this jam and i was like no dude fuck that you need to come to this camp out like this is where it's at we could finish that bike later i'm yeah. like let's go have some fun and so to be able to like i said bring those guys and have them experience it like i already know he's gonna come back forever yeah. um when we go next year we're gonna plan it a little different but we're gonna try to spend a little more time out there actually and try to get on the roads and do a little bit more riding you know and yeah, but I enjoyed staying at the campground this year. Ruben didn't leave the campground. I did this not year. leave. I made Franz, an excuse that there was Franz an oil mimosas leak on my bike or Franz. what was that on yeah. Friday? Franz Friday's mimosas. Yep. yep. Yeah. I went for a little cruise with the FXR guys, and I got back to the campground, and I didn't even recognize this dude. He was lit, that bro. Was white girl wasted. He was, <laughs> and that was before the uh club style, club style games. games yeah so i think his lady like had his, her finger in his throat puking him she up was, in the background trying to get him ready for fucking yeah, she's like sober up yeah, yeah she, she did she's puking like, you rally, gotta, puking you gotta, you gotta rally, play bro. two hours we gotta eat we gotta eat and that's yeah. how i was able to convince my boy austin to do it because he's like bro as long as we're not like eating nothing nasty or like drinking nothing crazy he's like i could do it and i'm like bro there's no way he could do it he's fucking faded dude, <laughs> dude the beans, so we man. conned his ass into doing I that couldn't have done the beans there's no really? way oh Just hell no ranch style beans no hell no i would have of all the things we could have picked I, beans have got to be the most palatable thing no. that you can pick. Beans, I mean, that was good. I've got a selective palate. I'm very plain. I mean, Jane. that. I mean, I couldn't. I don't think I would have done well with the uh, Budweisers. But no. warm and shaking up. That was great. <laughs> you tried to pour them in a cup and be all fancy with yeah, it. They were trying to gas them out, and then they fucking broke didn't their. Work they just drank they one warm. beer and smashed their cup, and then that didn't fucking work. work. But the, well, the thing, is, like a lot of people. A lot of the other uh, club style pages were were scared to do it because we weren't trying to humiliate you. No, you know what I mean. Like no. you, like you're a club style dude. You, you don't drink beer. Yeah, yeah. Come up here and drink some fucking beer. So for me, I thought it was great because I, I thought, thought it was, it was like amazing, a fucking. Dude. For I me, so I thought it was fun. more like a fucking parody, bro. Like you know, or like a roast, right? Yeah. So you always got all these. You got everybody 
rep in their territory. That's just what we do. And We're uh, all badass dudes. Yeah, everybody yeah, rides yeah, hard as fuck. Everybody's got the sickest bike. So like you said, like you're a club style guy. You party. Like you got to drink beer. You got to do something. So to have that style of a, of a game to like break up the mahogany of the camp out, I thought was perfect. Um, but the way Mark went about it and and did the page deal, yeah. I yeah, mean, at was... first I was kind of like, dog, really? But then the way, I'll be honest with you, the one that blew it out of the water was fucking Loudmouth Devin. Yeah. That fool fucking cranked it up, right? And uh, he was throwing down some heaters. And what's bad and... is you can't twist this guy's arm. Because yeah. he'll come up with something that's going to... So it was perfect for me because I'm up. like, all right, because all these dudes are all quiet. And then there was that one dude that started picking and poking. And so yeah. that's what was funny because then, you know, he we, we started going after each other because we realized like, yo, you know, we're cool with this. But then we started fucking with everybody else, you know, yeah. and then they started getting on it. And it was funny because like. By the time we got to do these games, it was like, who the fuck are you? What club are you from? Or where are you? Where are your territory? You know, and so it, it was just like after that, everybody was even closer. Like, yeah. you knew who you were. You knew your names. You knew everything. And what it did is, yeah, it's a camp out. Everybody parties. You have fun. But it got everybody together at the stage to you know, just cheer, have fun, laugh, joke. Yeah. And that was for me, that was one of the like core memories I could look back on of I of, think Club Style know. Games is here to stay for sure. That's mm -hmm. fun. I love but it. But yeah, that that I mean the whole point of that was to kind of like rally the the scenes in which these pages exist. Right. Yeah. Well what I liked is I mean a lot I would like to see a lot more of the women get you know to be per, you know, participating into it like my lady got up there and shot that load in that dude's face and i mean <laughs> that was a good dude, game it was fun i mean it got the ladies uh, my buddy sam his lady got up there and like it was crazy because when we met her she was real quiet you know and to for her to do that ride break out of the shower, bro dude she rode the back of sam's wide glide through the same storm that we went through i mean they were mobbing with us That's awesome. i was full geared up i had my leathers dude she had jeans and rain gear that tore apart like yeah. 100 miles into our trip <laughs> and like going back to the camp so out those with dudes the are baller i mean they're yeah, but going back to, like, what we're saying with our ladies and stuff and, you know, to each their own, I get it, because we just went on a guy's trip and it was nice yeah. to just be all guys and you know how it is, right? But at the same time, like, the camp out isn't just for guys, it's for the chicks too. And I think as time goes on, the more ladies that come will realize like there there's more chicks there than they're, than they're led to believe right yeah, yeah. you think it's just a bunch of dudes well it is kind of a bunch of dudes well it is but it, as it's evolving this last year we had more a lot women, more chicks there but I mean, the chicks were fun and they they had a good time and i think the crowd that's starting to come together is the right crowd it's not yeah. you know it's um, becoming a more solid crowd i mean but as far as it goes as far as like showing back up next year I'm already prepared because I know it's going to get bigger and bigger and yeah. bigger, you know, and I'm still on the fence, man. I, I, I think uh, I think the camp out needs to end at 10. Well, if it ends at 10, I think it needs to 10 end 10 p.m. At, no. 10 <laughs> oh, I'm like what? 10 p.m. I think it needs to end at 10 and then every five years reunion. Yeah. Camp out. OK. You know, I all mean, good things come to an end. And what's bad is. If you, if this continues, I mean, I've already talked this with small talk with them, and it's like, how much bigger could it get? And and that's the point is I don't really, I mean, you don't really want to get bigger. You no. just want to get more fun. And so that's what's happening is it's getting too big to the point to where, like, before the few previous years when I'd roll in and roll to the gas stations, whatever, the locals were like, hey, what's going on? How's it going? This last year, I did get a little bit of like, hey, what's going on? How come there's so many bikes here? What's the deal? You know, yeah. And so I think we're gaining a little more notice that way. And I don't know if that's good or bad. Well, it um, was good. I mean, this year, the, the sheriffs and the cities were down for us because of the money that it brings. But the state troopers, who was a different jurisdiction, yeah. they weren't having it. 
So and, the sheriffs were like, hey, if y'all want to do some stuff out front, let us know and we'll come block off the road a little bit. State troopers like, fuck no. And see, like, I talked to a few of the local business owners, just like little gas stations around. And that's what they said, that your camp out and a few others that Adam has there is what really brings that revenue to their area. Yeah. It helps them get through to the next year, you know? Yeah. And so as far as the area, the location, I love it. Um, if it ended at 10, I think... You know, that wouldn't be a bad thing, honestly. It would yeah. probably spark a little bit more for other people to do. I know there's other campouts, but there's I mean, nothing it, like it this. It would kind of allow to, I mean, it would kind of take away from K River. Yeah, but, I mean, like I said, this is this is all hype. But this is just yeah, thoughts, right? I mean, but yeah, definitely. I feel like when you put like this. When you have Sturgis, it goes on every year, forever, right. forever, forever, right? Right. How many people say, oh, man, I'm going to go next year, I'm gonna, and then they never do it, right? right. Like, I, when I talk about Giddy Up, I like the fact, I miss it. I wish it was still around. Right. But there's also this other side that's like, man, it's kind of rad that like I got to experience that. The and rad you know, part on that is because we've never got to experience right. Giddy Up. So in yeah. a sense, when you talk about it, I'm like... Man, Damn. I wish I could have yeah, been around to experience that. So I'm sure one of these days we're going to be sitting around talking and somebody's going to be to new Fast to this. Life Camp Out 5. And they're going to be like, what? Well, yeah. You know, what was that like? You'll never get to experience that again. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. There, there's just a lot. Like I said, it's still, I mean, it wouldn't happen for years anyway. Right. But at the same time, it's just like thoughts. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if... If it feels like every year everybody's having more fun and more fun, then yes. But at, at some point, it gets to the it gets to that point of if if we're doing all this work, all this promotion, all this all these conversations, and it's like you're getting more people that are just like getting pissed off because it's clout chasing air quotes, or uh, they're not leaving their campsites. Like, oh, this wasn't that great of an event because they didn't lean right, into right. it. I don't want to, you know, if it gets to a point where all these people are online just talking shit like, oh, it's, it's not as good as everybody says it was. You know what I mean? No, fuck yeah, all that. I mean, if it's not as good as you thought it would have been, then, then you have you to reevaluate yourself because yeah, I mean, you, you fucked re, off. Yeah, you need to reevaluate. Dude, like I had a homie going out there and I ain't going to put his personal business out on the line, right? But this dude was like, no, nah, bro, I got shit going on home. I should probably just stay. And I was pretty much like, bro, when you get home, you'll still have that same shit. Just come out here and just fucking have some fun with us. Yeah. And not saying that dude don't have the same problems when he got home, but the way he's able to just to like be free a little be bit, a little more free and not have to deal with that. Like it did. It, it helped him out. And, and you do. He, he got there. Same thing. Well, for what it's worth, dude, we fucking he didn't even roll with us. He saw us that, online yeah. and fucking that. caught up with us. And yeah. so. You know, like for him to do that and then to go out and actually have a good time and, and say he did was rewarding for me. And so, like, I guess what my goal is, is I'll bring the same cats that want to come every year. But I try to bring different people every year because yeah. I'm trying to show people like, yo, this is a total different way to live. There's it's a, you know, it's a different lifestyle. Well, just just here, think about you know? it, man. It's not even, like just take the camp out out of it. Just the people you can meet there, the Joe kids, the. The you know the yeah, big dude, Bruce the waiting on Bruce, parts, right? Fuck yeah. uh, fucking shut the fuck up, Don. If we can get goddamn, yeah, dude, if we get two lane lights to show up, man. think how fucking rad dude, that would be to real. see. Those guys are fucking. They're mile makers. They've been yeah. everywhere. This this needs, maybe they need to come and then we can dude, check every it year, off. Galen, Galen, you know we talk all the time, and uh, you know I was like, dude, y'all just gotta do it, man. You know, but they I don't know. They're good dudes. I think. What I met, I was able to meet them my first year in Sturgis. And yeah, they, that was like very, like Joey said earlier, it was very in the beginnings of. I I don't think they even had two lane life yet. Yeah. Um, but since I mean they were awesome dudes from the beginning, so I think it would be the first really cool if they came to the camp out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hint. But basically, when it comes down to it, like I said, I try to bring somebody different every year. And um, little Sam's gone back with me, you know, through the years. And um, it's just it's a rewarding trip. But at the same time, you got to have the mindset for it because you have 
if you're going to ride from a distance, you know, you're coming in the early spring, so you don't know if you're going to get weather. We got um, massive weather. You could get no weather. You could get a lot of weather. You already know K River rains every day, no matter what. So if we get some sun and some nice yeah. days, that's a plus. See, and we got a bunch lucky. this year. See, this year, so you came for the rain year, right? Mm, yeah. We came for the rain. rain. So y'all got the rain year where yeah. it rained like from. 6 p.m. Uh, to like 6 a.m. Yeah. yeah. So we went to bed at 6 p.m. when it started raining. We woke up about, I don't know, like 1. Yeah. No, it was about 10 o'clock. What was it? And then we partied till, well, like everybody six. was out on the stage. Yeah. And then everybody started carrying canopies over. And then we were doing the leg wrestling and all that. It was like 6 in the morning, though, and it was still raining. It was still raining. Yeah, I mean, it was awesome, though. But at the same time... With over 20 years in business, Custom Dynamics has built the largest product selection in the motorcycle lighting game. Superior lighting products supported by top quality customer service, all backed by lifetime warranties. I'm currently running Custom Dynamics all around on my Lowrider ST. Head on over to CustomDynamics.com where they have solutions for both early and late model motorcycles and give them a follow on the gram at custom dynamics being able to experience all that i don't think one person bitched about the rain you know what i mean yeah. i don't think anybody next bitched year, about the mud it next was like year, fun next year it rained a little like bit. a little bit as soon as we got there on thursday it mm-hmm. rained for like an hour and then it was the absolute most perfect weather Ever. But it rained enough to where when we got there, I he dug a rut. dug a rut into the wherever I was trying to go and dump my bike. As soon as I, we weren't even there five minutes, and I dumped my bike <laughs> into the mud and picked it up. Our RD picked me up, and then I shot mud all over wood grain. And yeah, that was a mess. That was fun though because. The way we rolled in and had to set up like kind of in the rain and then you know every that was cool because like once we got there all the guys came and helped us set up our tents and everybody was trying to get us set up fast so we weren't in the rain and then you know straight to the stage get yeah. dry have some beers and the whole experience with the camp out like like going back to what you said the people you meet um i could go and name guys for hours but I've met so many good dudes that I've continued to keep in touch with throughout Mm -hmm. the years of the camp out and just through life and just talking about, you know, certain things and seeing the experiences they go through. And it's just been, like I say, a life changing experience. I'm not normally a social person. I don't really break out of my shell. I don't have many friends other than like my brother and dad and a few other dudes. But to have that network of guys to, you know, be able to talk to and just yeah, fucking yeah. count on when you're out on the road is pretty sick. Um, I don't think I would have ever broke out of my shell the way I have in this whole culture if I wouldn't have gone to your camp out. I think that allowed me to realize that the the true people that are out here for what we are doing, that's that's really all they are is out to have some fun. You the know? way you did it, and I think it, it, it's a perfect, it's like, I don't want to say like don't take this serious because it is serious, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But just don't don't make it to where it, I'm, I'm trying to figure it's out how to put ch- it. Not, don't make it a chore. Well, well don't make it a joke. This ain't. It's a not joke, a joke, but know? it's like it's supposed to be fun. And yeah. like when within this world, it's kind of like the it's kind of like when you're in this world. Like, hey, we're having fun. You know, like this is what we're doing. This, you know, if we're if you're running around in a fucking thong, it is what it is, right? Right. Yeah. It's about having fun. It doesn't mean that you're like joking, like motorcycles are a fucking joke to you. No. You know what I'm saying? It just means that like, hey, I rode my motorcycle here, and I'm fucking and now I'm mocked. having fun. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. Now, now it's party time. I think the craziest thing about the whole like riding a motorcycle is like most gas stops that I go to, I get so many dudes that are like, I used to, or I wished, or I I'm going to. You know what I mean? And we get the guys. Is that a sportster? <laughs> you know, but it, what I'm getting to is like. There's a lot of people that don't get the opportunity to experience this lifestyle. And I am lucky. We are lucky because having a family and having a business and being able to juggle all that and take the time off to manage these rides and to do this, it's not always easy. And, you know, and and that's what sucks about social media is a lot of times people portray it wrong, you know, and they see us out 
at these campouts having fun and they think it's a clout chasing thing like you know we put some t-bars on my brother's bike and i was just joking around you know and because we're out at the camp out and we're used to this kind of joking around with guys and so i post and say yo finally a performance bagger you know and the f- fucking feathers i ruffled with that comment you'd be surprised insane. man you know like i was called down saying i was ruining the culture and the scene and all i was doing was joking you know and and that's where i'm trying to get more people to actually come out yeah. and experience it firsthand because then you realize that like you say no it's not a joke but you get to a point to where we're all doing the same thing we're smashing miles we're putting wind yeah. in our face well, and, and at the end of the day we just want to sit back and, and when, we, laugh. when we do yeah. all these things together okay I, if you post something on instagram i could i could jokingly comment to you and you take it as a joke to comment on somebody else's that doesn't know who I am, they yeah. take my comment offensive. So the point that I'm trying to make, I guess, is come around and learn who we are as people yeah. and build relationships. I think social media of, is lost. It is. It's so, very like, that's lost. That's why I don't, I don't, resp- I don't, I hate my people might just think of it as being an asshole. Maybe so, but I just don't like. I don't like communicating through social media. Right. I, I like to post right. a picture and, you know, if you like it, cool, whatever, yeah. you know, I appreciate it. I'm not going to comment back. But I'm hey, interact. I'm all over the country. I'm at, I have a, I host a bike night every week. I have a camp out. I'm at other people's camp outs. I'm at Born Free. I'm at, I'm at all this shit, right? Mm-hmm. Come fucking, Come let's out. go hang out. Let's hang out. Yeah. You, know, you know what I was thinking about the other day? Um, Cause you guys have our shirts, right? Yeah. A lot of people keep asking, like, oh, man, do a shirt. And, you know, I've been wanting to get into, like, making shirts. But I kind of like the way it is now. Like, if you see somebody with a Fast Life shirt, they got it from me somewhere. Yeah. They didn't order it. It didn't dude, come in the mail. You they got it all, from dude, something. I still got your little sticky tag that has my name on it, Joey, that you wrote on a shirt. It was a personable. I have limited shirts. You want one? I got one. And that's what's funny is because I, I got guys saying, like, that's sick shirt. They don't even know what Fast Life is. They just see it and they want it. And I'm yeah. like, bro, you don't even know. Like, get on the Excellent. podcast, listen to it, and it'll change your life a little I mean, bit. You got to go to have the shirt. Well, I think it's, I don't know. I just I, I just like the idea of it, of, of like, you know, because we were somewhere uh, recently and I saw a couple of people with the shirts on and, and uh, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember you at the camp out or. You, you came up to Born Free and, and, and picked one up, and it's like, I like that. There's like yeah. a personal connection to those people. Yeah, you're not just yeah. throwing out an order or, yeah. you know, a bunch of shirts to some yeah. random piece. And then it's like, I feel like when other people, you know, when they start to hear that, that that's how you get one, it's like, that oh, that dude, he's been, he, he goes places. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? He gets out, he rides, he does shit. Like, you know what I mean? Funny enough that you say, I mean, I want to ruffle no feathers, but I kind of got into it with my homies because he wanted to get a shirt for a guy uh-huh. that didn't go to the camp out. And then that's kind of what I was like, bro. Like, it was our first camp out. I was like, dude, it's it's for the people that ride here. Yeah. You know, and I'm not trying to be a prick about it or like not hook up our boy back at home. But the whole point of it is so when other people see all of us wearing this shirt together and they ask, we could say, yo, we went to this camp out. And this because it it's not a Sturgis, it's not a Laconia, it's not a Daytona, so you don't get all this clout. You don't get a fucking pin, a patch, a sticker, all this bullshit. So if that's all you get to take from that besides your memories, it is special and it means something. And yeah. so when I'm out in Sturgis or Arizona Bike Week or any other of these big ass rallies and I see other fools wearing a camp out shirt or a fast life shirt, I'm the same way. Like I like beeline and say oh i remember you i seen you there and and that's what's cool because it's not just a brand it's it's more personable and it's more of like i i know this dude i didn't just buy his shit you know yeah yeah i think it's cool i i mean i wouldn't say it was out of a like a a plan to do it that way it kind of started that way i mean craig's the one that kind of made us do the t-shirts i would have never done t-shirts for the camp out just because the t-shirts turned the camp out into more of a job than i wanted it to be because when you're, you know, Craig does the whole pre-order thing, and I just, I, I'm too, I don't have enough bandwidth to do that. So I'm just like, look, I'm going to buy $5,000 worth of T-shirts, 
bring them to camp out and hopefully I'll make my money back. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I yeah. mean, that's, that's good. And I, I, so far the last three years I've made my money back. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Hell yeah. But, um, but no, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I just think it's, it, it's just awesome. Like seeing like how you guys have, you know, once you came to the camp out and I found out about you and then seeing you, uh, you guys in the bikes that y'all built and kind of the past that you, you guys have taken and, and how that's kind of evolved it's been fun for even me to watch you know what i'm saying yeah, so right i mean the on. fxr build that was a big undertaking yeah i mean you you bought it and the next thing you know it's a frame <laughs> the, the the it's just completely blown yeah. apart so going back to that like i i've bolted on a shit ton of parts on my bagger and you know i love it have great experience with it whatever but i just like i said i wanted a little more i wanted to dig in and learn about this bike and learn yeah. about how how it worked and uh i'm a ocd bad so when i got this bike home and i started tearing it apart cleaning it i kept washing it nothing was cleaning to my standards and you know I, there was a lot of unfucking i had to do to the bike yeah and what's bad is i picked up my fxr right after the camp out two years ago and it was, was pretty like, much a clean one owner it, it is it was a clean one owner i mean the bars were kind of bent the front fender was a little dinged and i'm like i'm just gonna leave this baby alone like not yeah. mess with it and he's like just like you need to do this you need to do that and i'm like mm, he's just itching to get one so when he finally yeah. got one and then it turned into a frame I was definitely not surprised, but I'm like, I dude, just dude, like I wanted to do so in much. Deep, like, yeah. <laughs> and then like, like I said, my boy um, Adam from Atomic Cycle Coatings hit me up, and he was like, "Yo, um, if you want to tear this thing down, he's like, I'll help you out, you know." Because I wasn't sure at this point. I, I had a budget, but I wasn't like in the budget to totally rebuild this bike, yeah. and so that's when you guys started all the tour and everything and i got interested into that and at the time though i just i was more wanting to try to make the east coast jam the west coast and then do the triple crown mm -hmm. that was more on my plate and um but you know considering the fact that we got the bike in november i didn't tear it apart till january and so we only had like three months into it mm -hmm. i wasn't even bummed that that we weren't yeah you were i was bummed a little bit <laughs> but shit happens you know what i mean yeah and we just had to take it in stride and then and being like i was using dudes that build parts for the industry but ride in the industry so they were also busy doing shows and going to events and shit so i couldn't expect them just to drop what they were doing to get my parts and so you know certain things held up but yeah that's just part of it and and so that was just learning like never doing a frame off never doing a build it was all learning experience but um being able to get it down to the frame and realize there there wasn't much more I, I needed to do than rebuild it because at this point the bike was was so dirty like i said and trashed and everything was rusted and the bearings were fucked that i didn't even feel safe being on it you yeah. know and so we tore it all down and uh i i did it with him and my dad and like i said uh Tomic, he helped me out a bunch and um i had a buddy dave brown he came by every fucking day of the week that we worked on the bike. And if it wasn't just picking up tools or cleaning up the shop or just handing me shit, like yeah. that dude fucking helped me out tremendously. You know what I mean? And yeah. my brother, he fucking polished everything that was aluminum, hand polished all that shit to, you know, mirror rotors. finish, rotors, trees, everything you could think of. I mean, we polished you know? nuts and bolts on that frame that you don't even don't see. see yeah you know it's ridiculous my Absolutely. dad what did you do with ridiculous. the motor because you recoded the motor didn't you so the motor i pulled it all apart and rebuilt the top end um i just stuck with the 80 inch i just had my uh, guy hone the cylinders we just re-ringed it and did all the heads but um basically we stripped it all down with fucking that Listen. airplane chemical stripper shit the yeah. the it was pretty much blonde because it all had chipped off so i thought it was going to come off easy but the parts that were stuck on did not want to come yeah, off yeah so we stripped all that down and then um 
I redid all the motor, rebuilt it all. I used all new Kometic shit, and um, I used the Harley Texture Black, believe it or not. It was a rattle can shit. I just rattle canned that whole entire motor, pretty much, you know, masked all the pieces off, did it, and then I went through and sanded all the fins to make it contrast, Yeah. and then put the whole motor back together. I used all ARP hardware, and that was kind of a chore because there's no particular kit or like you know way to year put it together specific year kit. specific so yeah. i was just going and gauging shit off of a gauge and trying to find stuff outsource and ian that was the other ian part hooked us up yeah. with the gauge tool and ian hooked me up ian was another one like ian would call me and be like bro ian how's your ian. build going and i'd be like oh, i'm stuck i need this or i'm fucking I need this part or I need that. And like he would show up to the garage in an hour with the parts or the nice. tools or whatever, or, you know, so he was a good help too. And, um, but yeah, we basically rebuilt that whole motor stock. I just wanted to be able to put miles on it. I didn't want to have to deal with all the headache of yeah, that yeah. other shit. And, uh, but yeah, we just pretty much did a frame off restoration and I tried to modernize it as much as I can with like, I did LEDs and try to do, you know, like that stuff of modern, right? Yeah, yeah. Other than that, though, it's pretty much OG. Um, but uh, we did all the stickers, frame stickers. This dude in Thailand made all that shit for us. And that was the same thing. I, I wasn't sure if that was going to work out or how legit yeah. it was going to be, but it was legit as could like be the, like the the union the, stickers the and van stuff? Stickers, yeah the so union i got stickers, i did everything. van stickers union emissions like he even did the wheel and tire like oh, shit. he went crazy for me and atomic and clear coated everything into the frame so nothing is yeah so everything's on top of the to clear go. it's all clear yeah and then um uh, pretty much after that dude we just it was all building it and we did it all in my dad's garage on two yeah, scissor yeah. jacks we don't even have a fucking lift for what it's worth yeah. ruben threw the motor in on the floor and first uh, motor i've ever put into a frame so it's a lot of first for us i mean yeah we i ended up taking his bike was taking a little bit of time so i decided to take my top end apart because i was leaking and so we did all that and yeah, we rebuilt all I his mean, top end and rebuilt meantime. my top end in the meantime of rebuilding his bike mm -hmm. So we had stuff everywhere. My dad was freaking out. And yeah, we're, we're trying, trying to, to run, run a glass business. shop. Yeah, we're trying to run a business out of the same shop. So, yeah. I mean, people are coming over and they're like, are you doing a glass shop or a motorcycle shop? And it's like a little bit Shit, of both right now. And then right in the now. meantime, we got all these fucking local dudes that are trying to, like, get us to work on their bikes. Yeah. And we're Can like, no, thank you. No, thank you. Know? And it's we're like, we're working on our stuff, man. They're and like, we all, we see you guys working on your bikes. What's the deal? And it's like, nah, bro, that's why we're working on our bikes because nobody we're, else will. We're trying you know? to get our yeah. stuff on the road. So it was cool because we inspired a few other dudes around locally to kind of like pick up some wrenches and learn, nice. you know. And yeah, I mean, anytime we're we're always willing to help our local people, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring you to our shop, and we're gonna show you how to do it. Yeah, and then if and you then, you know if you need a hand, that's cool. But I'm not like the guy that you bring your bike to, and I'm not gonna just charge drop you it to do it and drop that. I'm not, not a drop it off guy. And pick it up. You're gonna actually help us do the work you're gonna learn yeah. it's not just yeah so that's part of like this whole like you know i don't know what you call it scene culture you could call it whatever you want i'm not big on on terminology you know what i mean but the way i look at it is in the end me and ruben just try to treat people the way we want to be treated on the road so well, you know we've been treated very well on the road i mean so it's very humbling and it's very eye-opening and that's what it's about i mean if somebody's on the side of the road and you have something that might be able to help them yeah they might have been there for only five minutes but you got them back on the road they might have been there five hours and sometimes and their road back on the road and sometimes their road might be the performance page and like i know it's funny to talk shit and clown and laugh but some of these dudes are trying and so like the whole point of it is you know, just help, just help, just help them out. Give them a little advice. Give them a little kickstart. And even like this, we went up to Denver for, um, I, I'm not sure if it was the Breaker Boys or whoever was doing a stunt show. And these guys were in the parking lot and the flashers are flashing on this street glide. And 
they've got the seat off and the guy's starting to pull the part of the BCM up and all this stuff and I'm look over and he's like dude these guys I'm laughing need, at these him dudes like, need some help and I'm like, like go help these fools oh man so he's like I'm like hey what's going on you know my name's Ruben you know you guys having a little bit of trouble and so like, yeah I can't get the flashers to shut off turn the ignition shut the flashers off turn the ignition off these dudes looked at me and they're like dick like you know it's like, simple bro it's they so just didn't simple. know just, yeah. just help somebody yeah. if they're struggling just help them I but, think, like you don't got a clown on them and nah, it was funny because I, I was mean, laughing was but I was just it like was dog funny. go help them because I knew that I'd left my flashers on. I've hit my flashers trying to turn the bike <laughs> off and then turn the ignition and that fucker stays flashing. You can't figure it out, off. you know? And it was funny, but we just tried to like, that's my whole thing. So on this last trip, that's just how I was. I just tried to treat people how I wanted to be treated. Yeah. And and Joey had all the tools. I had all the band-aids. <laughs> yeah, for it sure. It was legit, It was man. legit. West Coast was good. So I remember back uh, when I finished my fxr and uh just being on like the facebook pages like there's a million fxr pages right mm -hmm. and i would like see someone ask a question that i have the answer to mm -hmm. and then i'll go in there to start typing it and then i see there's so many 500 mm -hmm. comments mm -hmm. yeah and i just i don't, I don't even you back to. out i back out i don't want to yeah. be a part of that uh -uh. <laughs> yeah you know? so like when it comes to that shit dude i mean I've had my experiences because I've posted some shit and people have like clowned me on it too. Yeah, and there's so. people that have laughed at my posts and you know I'm being dead serious here. Like I, I've got an issue and I need help. There are a lot of people that are just gonna laugh at you in your face. Yeah, but that's what most of the time it's because that. like your problem's so fucking simple. Yeah, that it's funny. But when you're having that problem and somebody kind of laughs, you don't take it that way. Yeah. And it's really not that way. Most of these dudes are just laughing because they've been there, done they've that. They've been there, you done know? that, and they know the, the fix. Yeah, but the, the texting, it, it, you, you lose all the uh, the nuance. Mm -hmm. that, so, Dude, my boy even fucks with me like Joe. I mean, I'll hit him up all the time and be like, yo, I got a question for you. And I'll fucking send him a video or a picture or whatever. And like, this fool won't fucking reply to me. And I already know it. I'm like, all right, figure it out. Earn it. Right, yeah, Joe? So I called Joe Kid one night and I'm like, dude, my bike is leaking oil. You know, like I, can, I can't figure it out. Like there's, I've changed all the seals. I've been in the primary three, four times. Like I've changed everything. He's like, make a list. I'm like, all right, make a list call him back i'm like all right dude like i don't know you know it's like check it twice i'm like i did like three or four times and he's like well check it again you might be stupid dude i literally checked the list again and i figured out my problem what was it it was just it's the starter the starter has a seal and i went home and i did more research and i figured it out there's a yeah. starter seal on that old so that's where it was leaking mm -hmm, the old 85 so i was changing the inner primary seal when in reality it's the starter, starter seal, seal nice. which it never had one so I, for me when i took it apart i didn't no expect to throw in. a seal yeah. back in it and so simple stuff like that i mean yeah. some people jive you around but they're just they're making you earn and learn. It's, yeah, it's the whole it's like the ways teach of the road. a man to fish. Or, yeah, it's the ways of know. the road. Yeah. I mean, if you don't know, you're going to find out. So, but it's all worth it in the end. I mean, so do you, do you have like, you have the uh, Sportster and the FXR still? Or what, what all do you have? Um, no, so I currently have just the FXR and the Street Glide. I picked up a Sportster for 500 bucks from a guy. Same thing, this guy couldn't get this bike running, it wouldn't wouldn't fire. Um, so I gave him 500 bucks for the bike. We bring it home, my dad's looking around, and he's like, oh, the sensor, the tip sensor's unbolted. So we bolt up the tip sensor, and the bike starts. Mm -hmm. So pretty much the guy didn't know what was wrong. We diagnosed it, the bike runs fine, no smoke, no nothing, it has plenty of oil, runs great. So dad's gonna build a chopper out of that. Um, but I've had seven bikes, or six bikes so far. Damn. Um, I've had a, a Buell XB12R, um, my first Sportster, so just a bunch of different random stuff, stuff to flip. Yeah. I flipped that Buell to get the 
FXR, so that was nice. I mean, it's always a little bit better when you have cash and you could will and do instead of yeah. willing and doing and not having my, a lot of my cash. My problem is, is I don't like to let any of them go, so I... <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to like come up with cash to buy another one and yeah because he has all the bikes that he's owned so far yeah. except for one except for one but that one was a I think I had a lemon from HD literally Real? yeah like bad. they took it back that's they, how bad yeah. it was they yeah. were like you know what this bike like, is <laughs> for real dude good and it was crazy because it was actually during COVID so they're like everything needs to be stamped for warranties and it's all yeah, fucking shut yeah, down and totally my dealer was like on when we we're gonna get the bike i got back. you a new bike here you go <laughs> like it was crazy they hooked them up our, our our local dealership is definitely the the one at pueblo or the yeah yeah okay. yeah, yeah outpost, outpost here harley davidson they're g's um, yep. for sure oh, definitely awesome uh for our community all these gay beers going right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It happens. Yeah, so pretty much um, we're getting ready to go to Sturgis now. Um, like I said, this is going to be the first time that we take the FXR. Oh, this will be Ruben's second time, but it'll be the first time I've taken my FXR out there, obviously. Spike's going to be, uh, it'll click over, I think, like 5,000 on this trip. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for it. And uh, pretty much this year, we're just going to take it easy and kind of vacation out there. Uh, we kind of pretty much have the whole time off. So I'm not sure if we're going to stay out there the whole time or maybe even leave early and try to, like, hit off a couple other states on the way home, take a long way home or something. But um, this is pretty much our fifth year that we're doing the rally. And uh, like I said, if, if you're on the fence about doing anything, you should just uh, – make a plan and do it even if it's just one of these events we talk about um just try to do it yeah. and if you're gonna be by yourself like joey said earlier you're technically not gonna be by yourself for long it might be a couple gas stops but yeah there's some fun somewhere if you use social media the way it's uh made and you actually get on and network with these people like i said it's pretty sick because we met up with Colt and Bridger, uh, Murdoch, and Stu, Ryan Stewart. Uh, these dudes, like I said, I never even talked to these guys before. I never even met them, but just kind of found out through the grapevine they were headed the same place we were. And uh, once we met up with those dudes, it was just crazy because we were – it felt like we had been homies forever. We all just rode together, and it's crazy because now we're actually planning a trip to Sturgis together, and these dudes are going to come out to Four Corners. And so – like I said, it's it, one thing leads to another, and um, they're out of where? Th these dudes are out of Utah. Utah, I think Ogden or something in that okay. area. But uh, you know, it was cool too because they're two brothers, so it's just kind of cool to link up with two other brothers, you know. Yeah. Um, but like I said, pretty much, uh, if you're on the fence about doing stuff, just do it. Don't don't be scared to get on your bike and put some miles down and be uncomfortable because. If you're uncomfortable on the road a little bit and you're not sure where you're going to stay, you might hit some shitty weather or whatever. But when you finally get, it may even be the destination you thought you were going. You might just pull somewhere for the night. You might see that sunset or you might ride through that sunrise. But whatever it is, I can guarantee you it had been way better than sitting at home, you know, <laughs> or sitting at work. If you could manage to get the time off, just yeah. do it, you know. And uh, my whole point about the last five years of riding and evolving different styles of riding from just being in town to touring and riding a brand new bike to riding a 30 year old bike uh in the end like the wind is always the same it's mm -hmm. always relaxing and enjoying for me and i've made tremendous amount of friends throughout the country from the camp out to the bagger from the fxr to even my local hog chapter i've networked with dudes here and that's mm -hmm. been cool for what it's worth you know so just don't take for granted if your bike night is going on you should show up if your dealership's putting on a super saturday or some kind of event you should support that because not everywhere has that kind of support going on right now and 
and I'll be honest with you, I'm a little jealous of some of these other club style pages I see in the community right now because they are hitting off hard with their bike nights. They are really getting this scene together. And I've tried in my community to get this going and getting a bike night going and getting and it's just right now it's not clicking. It's not hitting off with these yeah. people. And it's just upsetting because I don't want to sound bad saying this, but if it's a memorial ride for somebody that died to raise some money, everybody's there. But if it's actually to like, let's ride and have some fun and like enjoy this together, it just seems like it's more of a chore or a job than it should be. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to tell everybody, you know, go to that bike night, even if it's for an hour or two, support it, you know, show your face. You never know who you're going to meet that might open a door for you or Mm -hmm. you might open a door for them, you know, and. Like I said, if it wasn't for Ruben getting a bike to begin with again and getting us all back on, I would have never experienced none of this. One thing, too, that was really cool that I got to experience this year for the camp out is we go out of our way, the long way to go to Dallas for the uh, pre-parties. This year, to have it at Strokers was awesome. Um, to meet Rick Fairless and have yeah. Rick Fairless give us a tour of his whole shop and I mean absolutely every nook and cranny he treated of that us like building. his family yeah I mean definitely shout out to Rick Fairless that was super cool yeah. that we're looking forward to uh, all the all the different spots that we've got picked out for the tour so Durango uh, Amarillo Emerald is going to be the sleeper because yeah. they got a whole bar street on like 66. That's like, it seems like they're competing on where we're going to party at. Well, they all want us there. I mean, then I just course, need to make some money so I can get the time off. Yeah. But yeah. I'm there. We've already, I mean, we've already talked about it, man. I mean, <laughs> October is sketch. We like, though. I mean, we it like could to snow su- on the way out from we Durango. Like to support our dudes. I mean, and well, if it's got local, snow, we'll just we'll just have to go the fast way. I mean, our lo- our local community, like Joey was saying, it, it's all memorial stuff. So we like to ride and and have fun. You doing guys are stuff. doing it. I mean, well, the the we like tour to go thing, where it's at. You know, the the tour thing has potential to be something very. Uh, I mean, not just for the ten builders involved, but for the community itself. I right. mean, think about it. Like, yeah. it's a it's everything that we we are about in in motorcycling. Uh, you know, working on your shit, making it cool, riding riding it with your homies and having a good time. You know what I'm saying? So it's a bike show that that encapsulates that. You know so on that bike show, are you planning on always doing an FXR or are you planning always on... FXR. Okay. Because, yeah. like, I know, like, there's been other... You know, we like talked about other bikes trying to do different models, different years, but... We talked about it, but the, it just doesn't... Uh, it doesn't... It's not feasible... Because the FXR is the only bike that's such a wide range. I mean, you could pick up an FXR for three grand or less. Yeah, and then you got anywhere from like a FXRS up to an RT. You got police yeah. bikes. You got, and then you got the guys that have built the drag frames. There's so many options. I mean, the only other bike that would have probably been like not comparable as far as like a good bike like an FXR, but available is like a skinny tire bagger. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Yeah. And so I'd rather just do the FXRs because I don't want to see people waste a lot of money on skinny tire backers. Like the whole point about the FXR tour that I like about it is it's bringing a little bit more knowledge to the bike. People that don't really know or think yeah. it's a sport. Dude, because it's funny. I even had a dude ask me if it was a sportster coming back from a truck stop. And, <laughs> and I told him it was an FXR. And he's like, well, is that a 1200? And I'm like, no, man, it's an FXR. Like, yeah, that's what before it is. Your time. You know? it's yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, it's funny because with the tour it's gonna it's gonna allow more people to see that because even for what it's worth in sturgis you go you have a few little fxr shows here and there but there's not really like nothing else specific like you have jeff's performance show and you have hardcore performance show and you have all these different the fxr show is like the mecca of like if you're gonna build a fxr to win a bike show that's the one right so the tour is never going to be a show like you got the best FXR. The tour is about building a bike, showing up with the other 10 people that built by or the other nine people that build bikes and you completing a thousand mile ride with other people. Just the way you guys had to figure out how to get your bikes to the jam. Yeah. That's what the tour is going to be about. What it reminds right? me of is like, you know, 
I don't want to sound too corny or nothing, but like back in the day, you watch biker build off, yeah, and you have these two dudes, and or it was a team of guys, and they're yeah. building these bikes, and they met up, and they rode fucking miles to get to a yeah. show. Like, so we but got it's on, a, it's on. Instead of doing two at a time, we're just doing fucking ten. Yeah, you know what I mean. So Sax is gonna like be videoing the whole thing. He's gonna turn it into kind of like a biker build off style documentary. Yeah. Um, the that's the goal. It, basically, it's. It's the, uh, you know, the biker build off and then like the, the way the hot bike tour was for sure. So like what I like about it is the fact that you guys are involving, you know, the garage builders, the, the yeah. you know, other guys like that. And uh, but what I do like, too, is a lot of times, you know, the clout back to that clout chasing shit people think you know that if you're not in the clique you can't hang out but i don't think a lot of people realize with the tour too is it doesn't matter if you're in the tent or not you could still build your fucking bike and show up to this yeah and ride with the homies into born free and still get to experience this with everybody it's not yeah, just I, the top 10 we have a and, lot of you know we have a lot of big brands in our industry that are also building fxrs to ride on the tour with us so it's like it's not so much like put it like this. If you if you're trying to like I've always said this, an FXR. If you want to be a custom bike builder or you want to build a bike shop, an FXR is a rite of passage, right? That's like you got to be able to do that before you jump into the game of all these other bikes. So if you are building a bike for whatever thing, or you do have a shop, or you're trying to get out there, I think you need to be on the tour for the simple fact of the amount of networking you're going to be able to do with the other builders on the tour the other brands involved with helping us out with this whole situation. And the fact that like, I've always tried to tell people like the, 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 on top of being able to do the work that you got to do, say you're a painter, you then also got to show the world. Right. And mm -hmm. if you only do it on Instagram, it's hard for you to like cross all the T's and dots, all the I's. Right. So you got to get out. You got to go to born free. You got to go to Sturgis. You got to go to these events you got to put let people put a face to a name and, and your brand and your presence will grow from that point mm -hmm. on if you just rely on social media i'm not saying you're not going to be successful but you're just not going to be as successful in my opinion i mean i can vouch for that because i'm experiencing that right now of uh people that have reached out to me inviting me to do certain things or mm -hmm. you know you reached out for the podcast whatever but mm -hmm. it's because we're continuously growing and and doing these things riding yeah. and showing our faces and that's the thing i've i mean it's funny you say something like that because for instance like steve i've hung out with steve probably 10 different times in, in a year and none of them have been in his hometown or my hometown yeah you know what i'm saying we've hung out all these different times and it's been in different fucking states different rallies different shows different races whatever it's been yeah and I, I, that's I just enjoy that about the whole yeah. you know scene. And Sometimes we see a lot of these people that we've networked with more than we see some of our local friends here in town. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, for what it's worth, I mean, well, that you know, not not to play devil's advocate with that. It's it's like you you guys are choosing the path of trying to be connected to the the, the broader spectrum of motorcycling, and so you're going to cross paths with that. It's like. I, I I can attest to the fact I know what it's like to try to like try to get people to come and do this thing you know travel do this but not everybody's into it man they're and not it, man and sometimes they need it's like they might be into it but it's the wrong time in their life right. you know what I mean so I don't know there's, there's only so much like I used to get like butthurt like oh man why won't you come do this to me it's the best right. thing in the world same and then I I, I just kind of step back I'm like man he's a grown ass man he's got his own priorities like I, well, how am I gonna be mad at him for doing what he does? Right. I will say, like, don't fucking uh, must be nice me though. Yeah, 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 fuck yeah, that yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, because getting on that is like there are a few of my boys that I've I, I felt like you say a little bummed. Like, man, why this is the best thing in the world? Why aren't you coming? But then I realized like the time of the life that they're in, what they're doing through, maybe it's just not for them right now, yeah. you know. And so I've had to realize that. It's not that I'm growing away from these homies. It's just that my direction that I'm going in is just different from them. And it's hard because I've gotten the whole clout chasing and bullshit like that. And it's it's not that I'm after the clout. 
or the recognition or this. It's just the fact that I want to be out just there. Say you're, you're out for the life. And it's I am. Life. Life. It's a lifestyle for me. It truly is. Like, yeah. as crazy as it sounds, I got my lady counting down the days right now that, till we hit the road because she's just as excited as I am to have a... We don't consider this going to Sturgis. This is our vacation. Like, yeah. this is your camp out fun. is our vacation. Like, mm. when we take a vacation in life, that's what we do. And so it is our lifestyle. And so some of the dudes that I've grown with that I thought took it serious like that, maybe that's why I trip on them because it's, to me, it's a lifestyle. I didn't realize it wasn't a lifestyle to them. And not that that's a wrong thing. It's just that, like you say, in the time of their lives, it's just not, you know, the same as me. And so that's where it makes it special to meet up with your guys out of state or around town or whatever, because when you, you get that opportunity to meet up, you know that that whole must be nice bullshit it is it's fucking nice nice because just like i worked my ass off to get here and get all my affairs in order so i could fucking leave for a month a week whatever it was you had to deal with the same shit yeah you had to get all your finances in order you had to make sure your lady was square before you took off you had to make sure if you were getting her to where you were at at a certain point everything was good to go mm -hmm. so yeah when that when you post them fucking little pictures and that's all they see is that one picture and it must be nice you bet your fucking ass it's really nice because mm -hmm. i had to get here and do a lot of shit to get where you're here. sitting at like, yeah, also, you know. the, the, <laughs> we're a product of like i think i am for sure like i don't when social media first came out remember i, I don't know I, I feel like we were all younger so we'd probably be more likely to put some of the bad things going on in life on there yeah yeah like and you're like had a fuck up day today yeah and then you realize you know? like i don't want to do that i don't like yeah you know what i mean like you, you see those facebook posts like oh got fired again today like i don't want people to know shit like that you don't want to talk about it but pray for me like yeah. fuck dude. don't ask questions <laughs> yeah. but prayers it's like okay and i think what has happened is I don't post none of that bullshit. It's not that I don't have problems. I yeah, just I don't fucking deal with it. Yeah. But what happens is... I take is one then, on the podcast after I drink whiskey. Right. <laughs> well, hey, I got a bottle up here. No, I don't need that. You want to stay for the night? You don't have to go to You're Boulder. trying to get to Boulder, but... <laughs> but, dude, what I'm saying is, like, there's just been times to where fools have told me, oh, it must be nice, and... and I have felt bad, like, damn, I wonder what they're going through to feel that way. But then at the same time, it's like, I said, I, I had to go through a bunch to get here. It's not like, you you see my Facebook, right? Or you see my Instagram. I really don't fuck with Facebook because that's kind of my personal deal. So if you're on my Instagram, cool. Everybody's shooting me Facebook requests. If I don't get you right away, it's more or less because that's my personal joint. I don't really just post my bike shit. But anyways, um, you know, I tend to post the good. I don't post the bad. I don't rant yeah. and rave. So if somebody's looking at my Facebook, they're probably saying like, damn, this dude's fucking How is he doing? Ha having this? a good life, having a good time, doing all this shit. But they don't see that I'm struggling. I got three kids. You know, I'm running a business with my brother and my dad. And they don't know the times that it's fucking business mm -hmm. has slowed down and we're stressed and we're choosing not to go on trips that we planned on going to because money ain't right yeah. or you know whatever the situation is and so i guess what i'm just trying to say is don't trip on fucking social media that that's yeah. just it's it's fake it's not even well some of my real original to point but some of the know. original people that I, I used to travel with when i first started riding you know they they kind of you know have gone on different paths and stuff like that and at first it was like man how could you not want to do this forever right and then it went, in my mentality went from like, how could you not want to do this forever? Then it went to, oh, you must not be able to. So, you know, it's something on that end. But realize, it, it took me a while to realize that maybe for some people, like, it just doesn't click the same way. It doesn't hit, right? right. Maybe, you know, doing, sitting on the couch and watching, you know, the office with your old lady gives you the feel in life. You know what I mean? I, I'm not trying to hate on that. No, I'm just yeah, saying, yeah, like, yeah. That oh, for don't some guys... Wrong. They, I, it's like they want to do the Traeger thing and, and, and get the lawn with the crisscross lines in it and shit. Like, I just ain't got time for that, you know? Right. I but, mean, don't get me wrong. There was times on my trip I was sitting here on the road fucking push starting Ruben's bike thinking, what the fuck am I doing? I got a beautiful lady and a couch and a fucking big screen I could be sitting at just doing nothing. But like I said, at the end of my trip, when I got home and I was sitting upstairs looking out the window, I felt fucking trapped. Like, and it wasn't yeah. in a bad way. It was just an odd way because I had experienced it so freely the whole yeah. time. 
And uh, see, I'm, I'm dealing with that right now where I'm getting more accustomed to being on the road. I've, I've slept in I've slept in a bed in Covington's in Woodward, Oklahoma, for over a month this year. Right. Yeah. I've been on the road uh, on a motorcycle for a month and a half. If I put everything together this right. year, I've been on road trips in a car for a month. I've only been home for maybe a month and a half the entire eight months that we've nine months now or eight months now yeah. that we've had. So it's like. Well, this, then this she's is starting got, to feel more normal to be, you know, just in a hotel or in, you know, sleeping on somebody's couch, you know, things right, like right, that. It's, right, it's, right. it's not a good thing. I need to find the balance, but it's it's just uh, the pursuit of trying to grow all these things, man. Like, I got a lot of irons in the What's fire. What's crazy, though, too, is you're doing a lot of stuff that a lot of people are scared to try and do. Fuck, I'm scared. <laughs> no, that's the that's thing, though. That's the thing, though. We were are, scared people all. People are scared to try. Yeah, that's why I've said this over and over on this podcast. If you take anything from it, if you're fucking scared to, to do something, at least do it once. Be scared the whole time you do it. But break mm-hmm. out of your shell and fucking do it. Because, like I said, there was times where I thought, what am I doing? I wish I was home. Why am I doing this? I mean, and then you get to a point to where you're like halfway from home and you don't have a choice. You're like, I either get where I'm going or I just turn around now and fucking end it. Yeah. You know? And... But like I said, every trip I've ever gone on, I've met somebody new. I've met a, I've met a friend for life. I've made a friend for life. And I've actually just been fortunate enough to do it all with my brother, honestly. You know, he's been my right hand man, my best friend. And whenever our bikes go down or whatever happens, we help each other. And, and so it's, it's actually made it easier in a way. Yeah. Cause I know we could always count on each other, but at the same time, we've both done individual trips where we've taken off on our own and, and done them and not saying it wasn't, you know, rewarding or fun, but sometimes it's just not as cool. It's just not as cool to experience it with somebody. And yeah. you're on the road all the time by yourself. So I, I know, you know what I'm saying is you get there sometimes and it's badass, but you're just there by yourself. It's like, yeah. you know, cause like even for us, I mean, waking up at four in the morning, like that, that sucked to have to get up and we've been on the road for three days already and everybody's fresh from who we've picked up and yeah we picked these dudes up at nine o'clock at night so for them to stay up till two and ride at four it ain't no big deal yeah. we've already got like 100 <laughs> or uh, 600 miles in and he yeah. and so we're like what do you mean we're gonna sleep for two fucking hours you know yeah, what i mean it's but it's just a whole different experience but once we got those dudes that wanted to do it with us that we're like, fuck yeah, let's experience together. And like that all went out the window. It's yeah. like, let's get up, let's go, let's do this. And uh going back to like the shows and, and saying like, you know, what what I gotta do say about the FXR guys, and I've gotta shout them out because like this is my first time. I've never experienced mm-hmm. this before. I I've done other stuff, but when you get there, it doesn't matter what bike you ride, what year, if it's a frame off, if it's a garage find, everybody there has a fucking sick bike. Everybody's bike is sick as fuck and everybody like puts that vibe off and, and there's no reward, there's no furthest travel, there's no oldest bike, there's none of the none of that bullshit. But at the end of it You can speculate all that. Everybody but is like all different they're all brothers at the end like you all meet and you're all like nice to meet you can't wait to see you again next year and you're like friends and so the only other place i've experienced that has been your camp out you know what i'm saying i haven't gone to any other guys camp out so i can't speak for that but the crazy camp out is good it's it's a and rennie's is good too um but, but, you know, like the show thing, the shows in general, you know, even though we did, you know, Big Trouble brought the show to the camp out. Um, the shows in general bring out the worst in people. I've always right. said this. Like, because when you spend money on your bike and then you intentionally put it in a show, you it's like playing the lotto. Like yeah. you're waiting. like You're, you're waiting like, for them to call your number. And when they yeah. don't, you're like, fuck everyone. So, <laughs> this, this was the thing, too. So, like, so we roll into Arizona Bike Week two years ago and Joey's got this performance what I speculate as a performance bagger fully carbon fully carbon whatever you can all this crap 
I've got Legends Air Ride. I've got the little stock a pangers and crap on it. Pinstripe like pin a cholo. Pinstripe like a cholo. It says Orale on the saddlebag. Yeah. And I roll into this V Twin Visionary show, and these dudes are just creaming on my bike. Drop the air right out. It's funny because we're like in and Arizona, just, and these dudes are just loving his just bike. Just loving this bike, dude. And like all these performance baggers are all over. Um, what's his name? What the. Teal and flame bike. Yeah, uh, Abdul's there. Abdul's there. Everybody's and got sick bikes, but like no one's got pinstripes. No one's. It's just a. It's more of that like southern style. Like they're just into yeah. it. You so know. So these dudes, these dude, we pull in, and these dudes are just all over my bike, and it's like that's not. That's why like, I think that like the, the best times of like some of the performance bagger stuff was when it wasn't big enough to have a show. Right. It was all about like just linking up with each other in events. Like, I remember the the first year we all linked up with the uh, proper baggers and Kyle and Steve Chamberlain and mm-hmm. at Sturgis one year. I think it was twenty nineteen. I believe it was just like twenty of us. You yeah. know what I mean. And then next year there was fifty of them, and then a hundred. And then now it's like almost every bagger has T bars, and, and and that's cool. Like I like that. The progression's good for everybody involved that, that works in this world, but. You know, then, of course, when people start putting money in their bikes, they want a show. And then the show brings in, you know, well, it didn't. If you need a show to justify why you spent the money on your bike, then you're doing it the wrong way. Yeah. The show should just be a, a reason to come hang out and have a beer with your friends and nerd out on some bikes. The reason you should put all this money in your bike is to have fun with it. Yeah. To go ride it. To go put a rock chip in that $10,000 bike yeah. job. To go have a good time. That's yeah. why I like Big Trouble's show because, like, even though they you guys gave away awards for that, they weren't like best Dinah, best beggar, best this, best that. It was like this is my choice because what you did to this bike to get it here, yeah. or this was my choice because you're actually just a funny motherfucker and I like you and you put your bike in the show. It wasn't necessarily a bike show; it was more of a social gathering. Yeah, that's what sucked is that I think some people that were new to the camp out didn't realize that that's what was going on. That. Because when the show ended, you had dudes, like, revving their engine. Like, I don't know if they were just doing it just to fuck around or they were just pissed. I don't know. I pulled up and did a burnout in the dirt just because I wanted to fucking I was too hot to my even move weenie. my bike, so. I wasn't in my short days this year, so I thought, well, what else can I do? <laughs> but, yeah. Well, guys, that was a good one. We're going to have to wrap it up, though. That way you could get on to Boulder. Yeah, I try to do... um. On the road, I usually try to keep them at two hours. What do we got? Two hour hours. 45, two hours? Yeah. yeah. Two hours. Well, I think That's it's good, all right. Man. We talked about some shit. Yeah. And uh, we're ready to hit Sturgis. I know you're going to be out there. Yeah, we'll I mean, this, this will come out after Sturgis, so people will hear this probably like uh, the week after Sturgis. That's cool. That's well, if y'all are listening to this after Sturgis and you ain't got shit to do, check out the Four Corners Rally. Four Corners Rally. It's going to be a good time. Uh, that'll be in between the tour. Um and yeah, uh, Durango Harley Davidson, they put on a nice uh, event up there. This is actually, I think, the 30th anniversary 30th that we're going to be doing. So uh, come check us out. We'll be out there. And uh, if not, we'll catch you guys on the road somewhere. All right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right, man. Thanks for the Bud Lights. Yeah. yeah. Quivers. <laughs> I like it. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I want to thank Joey and Ruben for their time and hanging out and I had a great time kicking with them and always have and always will (laughs) if you guys already know a lot of things coming up Born Free Texas is happening in October FXR Tour is coming in hot we're all getting our bikes dialed in for that looking forward to all this and how it transpires if you guys want to support this podcast please check out our Patreon uh, and also don't forget to check out our sponsors which are down below in the descriptions where you can get some cool shit for you and your motorcycle so do me a favor check it all out and i appreciate you listening and we're going to be back next month with some more good podcasts i got a lot of shit happening you're gonna like it all right peace